Everybody, I hope you're well. I'm crafting Budgie Mama, but most know me by Natasha or Tash. Hope you enjoy the show, and here with me is my best friend, Benny. Do you know what? When you, the way you were talking, <coughs> I thought you were going to close the show. Well, sorry. <laughs> um, so, guys, I've been a bit mean today. Um, I've made Tasha open the show because we're looking at maybe getting to Tasha streaming. Um, Obviously, she doesn't want to do her own stream. She doesn't feel confident. Um, listen, I've got an impression for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. My name's Natasha, and I have I can't do this. Oh, look what I've done. It's really good. <laughs> Is that yeah, fair? Thrown on me. Is that fair, Natasha? Yeah, you've thrown it on me. Yeah. Oh, listen, I've got some sound effects. I thought oh, yeah. we'd have some fun. So when Why not? When people come on the show, um, I'm going to throw a sound effect. So first comment of the day is from Lord Peter Webster. Hi, Lord Peter. That's not working. It's for me. It's not working. Oh, there we go. No, no, it's not sound effects. Sound effects I'm working on. So basically, I'm going to build this up over time. You'll see um, yes. that I've... Um, I've got a preset. I've been playing with my stream yard, a uh, stream deck. <laughs> so, you know, if if a uh, if a regular viewer, valued viewer comes on, then obviously I'll advertise their their stream. So, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, Lord right. Peter Webster says, hi, Peter, Natasha. Uh, Anfield Road layout in the loft. I've not done one you yet one. I haven't done you one yet, but I will do. I promise you, Lee. Uh, Lord Peter Webster says, hi, Lee. Uh, a lot of people says you do great on youtube tash there you go and then obviously be sure to check out one of the kindest people on youtube with great content too lord peter webster can be found at this and then oh and look look you'll never believe this dominic koku hi dom just happened to have one for him as well yeah um, so lee is here but airbrushing Dominique says, hi, Lee. Hi, Peter. Uh, Lord Peter says, hi, Dom. And then Dominique's excellent channel can be found at this address. So do please do check them out. Um, so um, shall we do recap from the last live show? Yeah. Um, I'll, let, I'll put you on spotlight. And then you can tell me all about your model that you have all made. about my model. Do you want to see it complete? I want to see it. No, I don't want to see it complete. I want to complete it on stream. Um, <laughs> I want to know what you've done. I want to know what you thought of it. I've done that with you. Got to stage four, wasn't it? A three. We're now three. on stage four. But yeah, I get confused with numbers. It's fine. Um, some of it stuck okay. Some of it not so much. Okay. Got little gaps in there. You will eventually see them, but they're not right. big gaps. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. I'm, so I'm maybe we can it. deal with gaps today then. Um, uh, I'm happy with it because it's my first go. Good. Yeah, that's the main thing. That's the important thing. That's the only yeah. question you should be asking. Am I happy with it? If yeah. the answer is no, do something about it. If the answer is yes, then then fine. Yeah. Uh, right. We're, Remove some of your spotlight. Uh, yeah, so Jobberton yeah. says hi, Penny, and then says hi, everyone in chat. 
and then Lord Peter Webster says, hi, Tony. So I need to give a massive, massive thank you to Lord Peter Webster, um, who sent me a little package today. He sent me a um, a little train set. It's like an army little play. I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but you've got to get the train through. And uh, obviously I had to check it because... Obviously, you can't give something to someone if it hasn't been checked. So, obviously, I set this train set up and I gave it a little go to make sure it was working. And do you know what? It took hours to check. I had to run the train round and round and round and <laughs> round. And, and it took absolutely hours and I was having to play with it, you know, make sure it works, you know. All in the all the interests of um, being a good gift giver, um, yes. yeah. Hours it took me, um, but yeah, it was all good. It all worked fine. So did you have fun doing it though? No, I wasn't having fun. I was checking. I was being very serious. Yeah, but was it fun checking it? Yeah, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I've never had a train set. I always wanted one as a kid, but you know, it's it's one of those middle class toys, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, you need a bit of money to have a bit of a train set, and yeah, um, totally ever since. But yeah, it's the first time. Uh, um, yeah, first time it was. Uh, I was playing with the train set proper. Um, he also sent. I feel terrible about this. Um, I've been having problems with my webcam on OBS. So Peter said that he had a couple of webcams, and I said, "Could you do me a favour?" Um, now normally I don't like. Uh, I don't. It's not. That I don't like. Um, Peter Webster is a very, very generous person. Yeah, he is. Um, but without sort of coming across the wrong way, I don't need people to send me stuff when there's other people out there that are just as worthy, if not more, and don't have the resources that I have. Normally, if I want something, I'll go and buy it. And there's people out there that don't have much, and they would appreciate things. So I've always said, you know, I can always get things. But this time round, I said, look, I need a bit of a favour. I think my camera's buggered up. It works. It was working absolutely fine with Melon, but it wasn't working with OBS. So okay. I said, is there any chance you could send me a webcam? And then I'll use that webcam, and then I'll send my, my old webcam on to someone who needs it. Literally, literally, I ain't lying. Half an hour before the postman knocked on the door, I was playing with some of the settings, and I've changed it all to manual setup rather than automatic. And um, it works absolutely fine. Postman knocks on the door, not one webcam, but two. Um, so I've spoken to people already. These are mine to do with whatever I want. Yeah. Um, so one has been reserved, hasn't it, Natasha? Yes. Um, basically, I've just sorted Natasha's Christmas present out. Now it's time to sort her birthday out. Um, so we're just going to get her just a little the next level up from streaming. So I've got a camera going begging. Uh, which I might I might do something if anyone come up with any great ideas to give it away. Um, so thank you, Peter. Also thinking about changing the name of the live show. Yes. Um, I mean, I quite like some of the titles we give it. What we called this one. Um, oh, he teaches newbie. Right? Yeah. I, I'm thinking that Tasha's always on with me. Why not just call it the Penny and Tasha show? Because it is, isn't it? It yes. is. Yeah. You're as much a part of this show as I am. Um, oh, guys, sorry, bear with me a sec because um, I forgot to do something. Um, Linky, if anyone wishes to join me, join us. Oh, join. Let's not do caps all that, as otherwise it looks like USA. Right, there we go. So, sorry, bear with me a second. All right, you do what you got to do. I am doing what i got to do. Uh, what's going on there? Why can't I find my channel? Uh, I oh, do. Oh, it signed me out of YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's just, oh. So, <laughs> all right, so I was logging into a Chromebook, and I couldn't, oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm logging into this Chromebook and it says um, enter your password. I ain't got a clue what my passwords are. Oh. 
because um, I just I just have everything on automatic, and um, it just I just go log in and it logs in. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, so, yeah. Um, so anyway, so I end up having to change my password. Um, so I'm almost there. Right. I am on so, laptop watching as well. Right, pin message. Right. So there is a message at the top that has been pinned. If anybody um, wishes to join us, you are more than welcome. Usual rules apply. Um, if I don't know you, we probably won't accept you. Spend a little bit more time in chat getting to know people. Um, but if anyone wants to jump in, Dave, maybe you want to jump in. We've not seen your face for a long, long time. Dave. Long. Dave. Come on, Dave. Yeah. Um, obviously, Lee is doing airbrushing, um, so he's not going to be able to. Um, and let's do a quick quick chat, chat catch up. Quite a bit there. Uh, there is quite a bit there. Oh, hang on. No. Uh, oh no what's going on hey oh hey peter parcel on the way i thought it said penny and i'm like whoa um so hey everyone in chat hi tony hey peter parcel on the way hi natasha hi tony hi, hi. hey lee hey penny and tash and everyone in chat thank you tony hey dave be honest penny you was having a great oh i, I was having a good time <laughs> yeah yeah i did enjoy that um so a lot of people hi dave s good evening penny and natasha uh evening. and phil says i got two train layout well well temporarily i've got a one train layout <laughs> are so, you gonna end up with 10 penny now <laughs> well i'll be absolutely honest with you so my plan was to put the put all of this craft room in the attic um obviously my job's got a bit better and it's cold in the attic so i was going to call it the cold the cold war bunker um not because i do cold war stuff but because i do war stuff and it's bloody freezing up there um hence the cold war bunker um yeah. but actually i think um i quite like the idea of doing something with the attic and i'm thinking about a train layout and i might just evolve it over time um and we'll see what happens but um yeah it's one of these projects where i've got so much other stuff to do um so a lot of people say this is high man well uh model railways are expensive but can be done cheaper as i'm doing with my layout yes um that's something i mean if you if you go on uh, this is my impression of model railways if you go on ebay and you go in the right places facebook marketplace etc etc you can get a lot cheaper setup. Um, you may not get what you want when you want it, but you can get a good layout. Oh, we've got Lee. Lee, I thought you were supposed to be doing airbrushing. That, that, and, and, and then, and then I have to call master. I finished the airbrushing. I was, well, that was quick, wasn't it? I, I've been airbrushing all day. I get, I give a cut off. I don't airbrush after eight o'clock at Cause night. You, that's because you got yourself a new airbrush and compressor, didn't you? You've got your <laughs> to it now, aren't you? No, it's, hey, it's dead quiet, though. Wow. Yeah, it is. Because I, I think you got the same compressor as me. It's so it's quiet, the isn't it? Timbertack. It's, uh, well, it might have a brand name, but yours looks the same as mine. Yeah, now, it, I was you know, doing... it is a brand name, but the, I'm on the wrong camera. Oh, no, put the camera back. We don't want your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you do um, well. No, uh, I mean, look, the, 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 the compressor that I've got, I mean, I had it on New Year's New Year's Eve build. Here's, here's a quick glimpse of what I've scratch built. I made that load. Nice. Nice. You're a That's little it. bit laggy there, Lee, but we'll go with it. I know why I'll be laggy. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's just the I've way it is. I've probably got too many cameras turned on. I've got seven cameras. <laughs> ah, now I don't know what you're using, but on OBS, I always click the button deactivate when not in use. It does mean yeah, you no, get... I don't use nothing. No. I don't, uh, I've, got, I've got it all going through USB powered hubs. Right. Um, Be careful then, because I have a bit of a struggle sometimes. Um. Anyway, let me just do a quick chat, 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 chat catch up. 
<laughs> so we've got High Manuel, Mother Mother Always Mother, 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 Can Be Expensive, uh, High Lord P. Uh, high <laughs> I know that one. Uh, excellent Penny, that's what it's all about. A fabulous community. It is, it is absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'm getting studying some plans to create a little module, module, module layout in N scale. Um, I'm interested. Go on that one. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in that knowing about the N scale because I think I think M. You can fit more in. You can fit more in on it. Yeah, I think MP will do well on N scale because he can go to town. Obviously, it's not just the train running through the middle. It's all about the platforms and the scenery and the the woodland areas. And I think MP, um, you know, it's going to come out the wrong way, but a good layout, the train isn't like the focal point. It adds to it rather yeah, than... Yeah, like I... I've does got, that make sense? Yeah, I've got... I've been up in the loft doing some work on the loft layout. Yeah, yeah. So you want all the roads and the cars and the people and the buildings. Like, yeah, I'm doing... I've been working on this. I've got a lot of videos. My... Um, the aim was I am not going on a lot of live streams. Yeah, I'd like live stream will go on, but my aim is to get more content out there on my channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, anyway, so uh no thanks needed penny. You have another oh god, yeah, he said that. He did say he's got another parcel on its way. I'm just absolutely intrigued as to what it is. Thing is with Peter, it's if I know Peter well enough. I've dropped a little comment somewhere along the lines. I got the one. Oh, two, you've got three. one, two, three blocks. Aren't they fantastic? Yeah, and have a guess who they come off. Uh, Pete Webster? Yes. <laughs> Listen, if, if someone says, guess where I got them from, if you said Peter Webster, you've probably got a 50-50 chance of it being right. Um, yeah, no, I've got some one, two, three blocks. They are absolutely fantastic. For the benefit of you that don't know one, two, three blocks, and you just show them to the camera, um, Lee. Yeah, no problem. So the reason they're called one, one, two, three blocks is they are exactly one inch thick. They are two inches long with a, sorry, two inches deep with a length of three inches. They are exactly square on all angles and... Yeah. They also weigh a ton, so if you need to, like, hold two pieces together, you can place one on top and use it as a weight. There's I so know, many things I, you can I use. I use them a lot for squaring off things. Squaring off is, is one of the best things. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I more often than not use them. If I want to glue something and place something on top and press it down, I'll use my uh, one, two, three. No, block. I won't use my one, two, three blocks. Well, I've got jars for that. Oh, <laughs> listen. If um, you know, there's so many uses for them. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but their squareness is is a big advantage. Um, you should be able to screw them together, but different ones depend on whether you get the really expensive ones or the cheaper ones. Yeah, I've got these screw um, threads in it. But they should be some screw holes in them, so you can theoretically you can add them together. So yeah. by having one, two, and three, you add those one, twos, and threes together, so you can get five inches. You can get six inches put multiple ones together you get exactly the same length that you want yeah uh, so linky at the top as uh, lee as already knows yeah uh, hi manuel I, hi I, I don't even know what monitor to look at i've got another camera even I've listen another... in a minute we're just going to be cracking on with doing a tank so yeah. you just crack on doing what you're doing yeah well if i'd have known you were doing the tank i've got that cromwell tank from have you have you well, you're more than welcome to join in. If anybody yeah, no, wants to I join in, if anybody wants to join in, they don't have to do the exact same model. It's just the model that we've chosen. Are you going to be doing another one of these builds, Natasha? Yeah, I've got that like another five we've got, of them to do. Yeah, we, we, we've 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 already lined up the next seven builds, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. I'm just, well, when you're doing starting your next build and plastic kit, let me know. Uh, Penny, message me, and I'll be interested. Yeah. In Build a lot all right then yeah right uh dave mac builds evening penny and tasha and all in chat hi dave mac oh god 
This is why I don't do German. This is exactly why I don't do German. <laughs> I knew, I knew I was I'll, I'll give that. it my best shot. I'll give it my best shot, but I make no guarantees that I'm not going to butcher the language. German locomotives from Fleshman, 1939 stroke 45, World War II, Epoch II, Rachbahn. Is that was that a good effort? Yes. Oh. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> oh hey, not the enjoyment of YouTube attempt it, Tash. No. Right. Robinson says, Hi Dave, hi Dave Mac Bills. Dave Mac says I'll be on the next one if okay. Absolutely no problems. Um I've been watching some of your little little bill. I am calling them little builds, but they're airfix builds. Um so Dave Mac is another one. No one's took advantage of Lidl's half price sale quite the way I did. Um, when they came out on the Thursday, by Thursday early evening, the shelves were half empty. Ours wasn't. And I said, I'll be fair, I'll give people a chance to buy them. And I planned on going back on the Monday and emptying the shelves. And um, they actually announced their half price sale. So I went in Monday morning and cleared the shelves. But I gave people two good days to do. The yeah. um, Lord Peter Webster, I'm eating milk tray chili. Do you remember the old adverts? All because the lady loves milk tray. Dun, 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 dun. Um, hi, Chubberton Junction, Lord Peter. Hi, all. Happy New Year to everyone. Hi, uh, Lee, I uploaded a video, How to Mix Paint and Dilute Airbrush. I was starting to watch that. Um, yeah. Let's do another link for Dominique. Um, I, so that, Dominic. I don't use Vallejo. I use the principle's the same. The principle is the same. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got it down. I've got it. Yeah. What it was, I needed to get the air compressor right. Uh, uh, it was it was what? set too high. I'm saying this not having fully watched Dominique's video you'll find that generally this brand will mix 50 50 this brand will mix seven yeah I, I, I do mix hang on lee hang on lee right so this brand will mix 70 30 this one might be 90 10. you'll find your own way to mix certain brands yeah. um but the principle is the same for all of them yeah it, it is. here's some paint here's some thinner mix the two together I have a tendency to slightly over thin um, because I'm worried about splattering or in the case of brushing brush marks, I'd rather have to do an extra coat. Um, so Lord Peter Webb says, I can see the cats running after the loco. Yes, they were. Well, they were standing there. Spirit did form a little bridge because she really wasn't sure what to do with this train going backwards and forwards. She didn't know what to do with it. So she just sat there watching it. Um, bear with me a sec. I thought been oh, hang on. I've just hidden everybody on stream now. I thought been airbrushing. Right, bear with me. Low nice. Low. Nice. See, that's why I do thin coats. I'd rather have to do an extra yeah, coat. Yeah, that's a three coat. You can still see the old yeah. design through it. Yeah. But I'll just keep going over it. It's okay. No, it's fine. It, it's, it's, um, it's better to over thin than not thin enough. Yeah, anyway, look at this. Hi, Mark. Hi, Dominique. Hi, Jobberton. Hi, Dominique. Hi, MP. N scale is amazing, but my eyesight no good for that size. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it look, is. A new it's unboxing. On Engage, you can cram more in. Yeah. Peter Webster says, new unboxing coming for me early next week. Look forward to it. Dominique, yep, those one, two, three blocks are really good, but so expensive. <laughs> um, they are, but they are very good. Yeah, um, are. But it's it's the one tool. See, i got some tools. I, I don't buy expensive tools. What I tend to do is if I buy something, I'll buy kind of entry level and then – as it breaks or wears out or whatever, then I'll buy uh, a more expensive replacement. So, I like, just, I just use my wish list. I just yeah. Wish list. So, for example, I needed to drill some holes in the back of my desk. So, I needed spade drills, you know, the big wide ones to cut holes. Oh, with. yeah. Now, 
one one good spade bit is just not far off uh, i think it's about seven or eight quid i actually bought a set of them set of six for eight quid now what will happen is there'll be one that i'll use more than others um basically i'm using the one that's just a little bit bigger than the usb port and i'm just drilling through mdf so i'll probably get a couple of years usage out of that once it's no good then i'll go out and get a good individual one now a lot of things I've got, because it's quite cheap, I've gone, oh, I can't find that. Oh, I'll buy another one. The one, two, three blocks is one of the few things that I'm going, oh, no, I can't find them. I must find them. I'm not buying any replacements yeah. because they are a bit cheap, uh, expensive. Um, not too badly priced on Amazon. Um, yeah, depends on, yeah, well, you know what Amazon's like. You could probably pick them up for 20 quid. You could probably pick them up for 200 quid. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a set I was looking at that were less than 20 quid. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, the way that I use one, two, three blocks, which is the fact that they're square and the fact that they're heavy, um, cheap ones will do me fine. Uh, MP says, hi, Dave Mac. Uh, Dave Mac says, I got my air kits, air fix kits from Aldi. Uh, hi, MP. Don't forget that's Dominique's channel. Check his channel out for his new video. Already sub to it. Yeah. Uh, hi, all from Smith's Beads. Hi, Mike and Teresa. I bought some milk tray, but I couldn't find a lady to give them to. This was the time before Teresa. Oh, bless. Uh, the German, oh, he's doing it again, look. I think people are winding me up today with the German. The German, <laughs> buildings, the build, German buildings I use for N scale are Volmer, Kibri, and Faller. I bet they're not even German names, are they? Faller is. So, uh, I well caught there, Mike. Uh, Chobberton, I took delivery of the Airfix Vulcan B Mark II, which my now departed father in law flew building in a so is that the first vulcan or is that the new black buck one because i got that first one when i bought the airfix mystery box um spade bits are easy to grind and sharpen fair point i forgot about that uh jc bricks evening penny lee and all in chat how are you my friend hi, JC. Uh, hi james hi peter the other project I'm preparing in Ensco is old timer American Steam Union Pacific with a little western town from from the time. Nice. Nice. That'll be a nice little setup, that. Yeah. Hope you're doing well, Peter. Hi, JC. I M P, and we are caught up with the chat. So, as Natasha is uh, a little bit occupied at the moment, um, I'm going to steal the screen. Um, Lee, that's fine. I'm already, and I'm also going to change my uh, camera so you don't have to look up, look for my ugly mug. Uh, right, so excuse the mess, guys. Um, I've actually started using this keyboard. Um, I've got this Bluetooth keyboard, absolutely fantastic. But every time the USB cable disconnects, I have to completely redo the USB connection. Um, right, so. In the last issue, last issue, last day, last video, we, uh, well, let's tell you what I'm doing first. So we're doing a 1 to 72 scale Sherman Firefly. It's an airfix starter set. Uh, this particular one was bought from Lidl's. It was either £7 or it's £3.50. I can't remember if I bought it in the first swoop or the second. Um, if you wanted to buy one, you're looking at about 11 quid, but... It looks like Aldi and Lidl's do these kits on a regular basis. So, yeah, they do. Yeah, I personally would wait. You might have to wait six months. You might. Have I, to wait I, I could have waited a while to get that compressor. I could have got that compressor in Aldi cheaper, but I wanted it. And I had the money. So See, I'm a bit it. funny with Aldi and Lidl's in that sense. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think you have to be careful what you're buying. Um not saying there is anything wrong with them but um yeah I, I don't know i'd rather buy my model equipment from a model shop um kits is different because 
you know, that's boxed up with the word airfix on it. So you know exactly what you're getting. Um, but, you know, if you got a box and it said Aldi model kit, you know, I, it might be surprisingly good. Um, right. So we have done the first three stages. We're not progressing very fast. Um, we are. Well, I say we're dealing with someone who's um, not done models before, but she did cheat and she started the jet promise without me. Um, and I've did... got that jet promise. Mm. It's a good little kit. Um, she's done well on that, but she has also noticed some of those little little things that you've got to look out for, uh, which we will tackle once we get to them. I've got Cousin uh, Saga as well. I've you got the what? I've got the Cutty Sarg. Did you? How are you finding that? I'll show you now. I'm just cleaning my bench to put it on the bench. Right, can I give you guys a spoiler? Go on. I'm starting a new series called Mojo Builds. Um, yeah. My New Year's resolution is nice and simple. I'm going to build more kits than I buy. Right? <laughs> simple as that. Um, so I'm going to do it through a series called Mojo Builds. So I'm looking for little kits that I can just bang out in a day or two. I don't have to do them to any massive standard. Um, but I was going to do the 12 days of Craftmas, which I never actually did. So yeah. I've, I've just done a little bit of editing. And this is going to be my first mojo build. Now, it's not fantastic. Um, but this one is going to be coming out on the 14th of January. And it's not showing you in any great detail. And... So basically what I'm calling a mojo build is something that you can do nice and quick. Um, you can do it because you just don't feel like modeling or you can do it because you want to try out a new technique on something cheap and cheerful. Um, the main point of me doing this one is I wanted to do, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. Um, yes, I am. And it's gone again. You know when you get those sneezes that say, you're going to sneeze. No, you're not. What ship's that one? This is the Mary Rose. Yeah. Um, I don't want to build this Cookie Saga again. To, uh, well, was... it, yeah. But you see, this one, I wanted to try out the dark the dark dirt wash. Um, I think it is maybe a little bit dark and a little bit brown. Um, but I had fun with it. And I tried out what I wanted to do. And that is the whole point of a mojo build. And yeah, well. to be honest with you, when I built this, it was like I'm building it because I've got to, you know, I've got to get these videos out. Um, but once I'd finished it, I'm like, you know what? I want to do some more now. And that to me is the whole point of a mojo build. And yeah. I just knocked the I just knocked the sail off. Yeah, okay. Um, I did have trouble with these sails, they're so bloody awkward. They're only glued on by two tiny points. And as you can see, but that big sail, that's that's um that gave me the most problems. But no, I'm I'm happy with it. But yeah, that'll be coming out soon. And then the week after, I feel terrible because I bought this to, to build along with um um building with the boys New Year stream. And then I had some guests come round, so I had to obviously entertain them. Um, but I finished building this today. It's got lights, but you can't see because I've got my lights. It looks really good in the dark. And this only took about two and a half hours to build, believe it or not. I think that looks more than it took. Um, but I really enjoyed that. So I'm looking at knocking some little kits out as mojo builds. Um, I'll probably give you all of my channel updates throughout the stream. You know what I'm like. I can't keep the secret. Um, so let's put you on bigger so we can see what you're doing. Do. So is that the cutty sock there then? Yeah. Now that looks roughly the same scale or roughly the same size as my uh, Mary Rose. It is, and it's horrible. No, oh. it's not horrible. It is, it's too small. No, it's a challenge. Not horrible, it's a challenge. Oh, yeah. I want to get. I want to get my jab done. My jab's my neck. Max one wants it. Let me, do, um, let me just do a chat catch up because it's building up. Uh, so hey CJ, that's good. Glad you're doing 
well, Peter. It was a good catch up. Good catch, Peter. Imagine the trouble I'd be in. LOL, Mike. Uh, Aldi, I was there. Yes, I didn't know they did stuff like that, Sherman. Um, they come in from time to time. I think I think Liddles did some kits October, November time, and then yeah. they did them December, and Aldi did them December because it makes sense because they're good Christmas presents, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, so Dave Mack says, is that the 1 to 775 scale kit, Lee? I do not know. I just got it for Christmas. I think it is the 775 scale, but they don't put that on the box. No, I've got the box here. Mm. I think it won't tell you. All on it. But it's, it looks a good little kit. Yeah. Um, right, Lord Peter says, Happy birthday in advance, James. We ain't got to sing happy birthday, have we? Because I don't think Lee can sing, can you? No, I sound like I'm starting on the cat's tail. Uh, Dave Mack says, Evening, Mike. Dave, 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 Dave. Hi. Uh, nice little build, Penny. Uh, I've got that cutty suck and Lee. And Penny, it's a lot smaller than the Mary Road. Do you know what? I want to find that kit now. Um, if I'd known you wanted it, you could have had this one before I started building it. You didn't know how. No, listen, right? A lot of times I find myself doing a kit and uh, there's various moments where you're like, I really wish I hadn't done that. Um, there were parts of this where I'm thinking, do you know what? Sod that. I'm just going to stop and chuck it in the bin. Um, but you get through it, and then you get to the end result, and you're like, I made that. I'm you know? still waiting for one more part from the airbrush. One more what? Yes, one more. I'm waiting for a, I'm waiting for another pipe, the pipe. airbrush pipe, and a doctor. Oh. What do you mean, the big little hoses? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I, I wanted the step-down thing. The step. Oh, what the little adapter to produce the air pressure? No, the thing that you you have. Let me. Oh, let me. Oh, I can't do it on here. I can't change cameras. Um, what you screw on to get the di different sizes. Oh yes, yes, I know. Yeah, that. it's come. Yeah, see, I, I just and the other bit has come from the same. Is the other bit is coming from the same company? Why couldn't we put them in the box together? Maybe they weren't in stock and they didn't want to leave. No, them they are. Place. It's it's actually it got shipped out the same day. Oh, okay, I don't know. I mean, look, Christmas might play a part. I um, I ordered some cat litter. Um, I buy my cat stuff online. Uh, from a company called Zoo Plus, I think they're brilliant. And I bought some cat litter, and I bought. Um, it's one of those funny things where you buy the cat litter, you are like spend one pound ninety nine, three pound or something to get free postage, and the free postage is like um, uh, four quid. So I bought some cat toys to bring it up to free postage because you got to buy cat toys. <laughs> For some reason, they decided they need to send it in two packages, the cat litter in one box and the toys in another. Um, the toys came three days ago. I'm still waiting for the cat litter. Oh, um, right. And I think it's to do with Christmas and New Year. Because don't forget, even though I ordered it New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, um, it's still you've got all the all the boxes and everything that's been sent over Christmas. They're still come. There's a bit of a bottleneck. So, um, yeah, I just, um, it could just be the Christmas. I'm not even bothered how the painting turns out on this with the brush, as long as it looks decent. That's fine. I mean, what I always say is build build something to it to your standard the best you can. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you coming back. You've gone quiet, Tasha. I'm back, but I'm waiting on food. All right, not a problem. Do you want to stay on the stream or do you want to tell you what? If you disappear, we'll we'll just remove you. All right. Well, she's going to come in. All right, I'll uh, I'll 
Yeah. Do me to to drop me a Facebook message when you're ready. Sorry. No, so I don't apologize. Um, so yeah, trouble with Natasha's life as she has things going on at whatever time. It could just be any time. Uh right, so uh where were we up to? I've got I that. actually airbrushed these sails were airbrushed. Right. Oh, that's good. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I think I airbrushed mine. I ain't I ain't brush paint the sails, especially with white. No. Uh, right, Dave Mack, I'm doing that cutty sock at the very end of my other builds. Uh, thanks, Peter. Only four days. Uh, yeah, I've got the I've got that Cronshaw tank as well, Dave Mack. Yeah. yeah, Lord Peter Webster says I'm like that with the Titanic. I think he's saying um, about you'll get bits where you just go, yes, yeah, sod this for Game of Soldiers, and you have just got to just get through it, and then you get an interesting bit. I'm hearing that the um, the Batmobile tum the bat the tumbler bat tumbler is got some really slow issues and a lot of people are sort of going what's the point um but they're through that now and now they're getting on with the fun bits uh yeah. scott offered to build it for me uh the titanic is quite easy Peter. yes you do get awkward parts but it's well worth it there you go that sums it up uh it's not the difficulty that bothers me it's just not feeling like i want to build it i get that all the time I get, I get that all the time with the bill. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to crack on and do it. And it's really hard to sort of pull you out of that slump. Um, so I've got a little bit of, I say I'm probably going to end up giving away all of my channel update before the end of the stream. Um, I have decided I'm still waiting on my Robocop issues. Um, now, even if I get my... Back in a minute. Yeah, no problems. Um, so... Even if I get my Robocop issues tomorrow morning, which is the last day I can get them and film them, and I get them out, I'm then probably not going to get the next pack within four weeks. Um, then we've got the ET. It's on its way to me. Um, but um, it's only two issues because it's his first pack. It's going to be a month till I get the next pack. So obviously I've got nothing to build, so I can't put anything out. So I've made, I kind of come up with this as I was doing the channel update. Um, I'm going to make the Robocop and the ET fortnightly. Um, two reasons. One is it's going to be able to fit everything in. If I then start getting a backlog of issues, I can always do more than one issue per video. Um, but I find it very awkward to be putting a video out every week. And then all of a sudden, sorry, guys, there's no issue next week because I, I haven't got the magazines. Um, so I'm going to go fortnightly with them, um, which then frees up a day. Um, and I am starting a, oh, are you back? Yeah, she's yeah. back. Lovely. Sorry, I can't turn my phone sideways. No, it's I'm absolutely fine. I'm probably getting a message now, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just got a message from you saying, back. So, um Oh, so I told you this pre-stream. My life is wonderful right now. So I've just yeah. had my three weeks at Kilmarnock. Um, Christmas week, he goes, oh, you've got some holiday to use up. Um, do you, I'll give you Christmas week off. He said, you've got Christmas Day, Boxing Day off. So I've had a week and a half off. Then I've gone back to work for two days. He's chucked in an extra day's holiday. Now I've got two days off and then I'm back to London. But it gets even better because he messages me today. Um, he says, oh, you've got another five days to use up. So I'm going to give you a week's holiday on the 11th of March. So in seven weeks, when I do go back to Kilmarnock, I'm only doing two weeks out of three. Yeah. Um, because I've got, I say, I've got a week's holiday to use up to, uh, before April. So um, basically, I've got a whole, I've got a week's holiday coming up in three weeks, and then I've got another week's holiday six weeks after that. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to forget how to drive a bus, aren't I? <laughs> Don't make um, me laugh. Okay, you're not allowed to laugh. No, yeah. Oh, you can now, can you? Right. Yeah. Uh, right, it's quite easy. It's not uh, right. In other words, Peter, you've lost your mojo on that build. Maybe you need some mojo builds. 
Uh, yeah. I have 84 issues sitting on the shelf and they just keep piling up and someone else could get a bargain. Um, to be honest with you, Pete, and my advice is to build it. Um, I've um, I've done that before where I've just, well, I had an incident over a year ago, about a year ago, and I just completely lost everything mentally. And I did some building. I was actually chatting. Teresa, my therapy is, is Teresa. Um, she's, as she puts it, she's had so many personal streams um, where I've rung her on Facebook and I, we've had a video chat. And then I'm just like, you know what, I'll do a little bit of building. And then as we're chatting, just chit-chatting, and suddenly I've built eight issues. And I'm like, wow, and that really gets you going. Um, but if you just do one or two issues and then leave it, or you might want to do 10 issues, um, but you know how these part works go. Um, I call them slow issues and faster, you know, more interesting issues. We're not going to love every single issue um, of every single part work. And you know full well on, uh, I hate wheels. I hate Harshet wheels. They're so boring. Um, and of course, I build the Eddie Stobart, which has got one, two. How many wheels has the Eddie Stobart got? God, it could be 10. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14. Yeah. I'll, do you know, oh. I'm sorry, guys. I've got to count them now. <laughs> I have got to count them. So you've got eight on the trailer. Yeah. And you've got six, six on, on the truck. Six on the thing. Fourteen wheels. Yeah, I got four I out. I did not enjoy doing six. Six on the bus. Yeah, six wheels on the bus. I didn't enjoy that. And then I go and pick a model that's got fourteen wheels. <laughs> uh, but they're done now, so you know it's all good. Uh, I'm trying not least... to eat here on your stream. No, oh, don't worry about it. It's a live stream. There, there's less rules on a live stream. Right. Okay. Um, if you need to eat, you need to eat. You I've know. got to. We do, we do anything between two hours and eight hours on a stream. If you need to eat, drink, or do whatever, then you do. Yeah. I've got my cup of coffee. I'll be taking a break at some point to go and make another coffee. I'm actually thinking about moving my... I've got a little Tassimo machine. Yeah. And I'm thinking about moving it onto the desk. Um, because I drink latte most of the time, so you don't need milk from the fridge. All I need is sugar. Um, and I think I might just put it on the on the on the desk, and every time I want a coffee, just put the pods in. <laughs> Done. Uh I never had it to begin with. I just kept paying for the packs and thought I may have a change of mind, but not happening yet. Well, there you go. Give it time, Peter. It's a great build. Uh 14. I can hire Teresa eight for chats. <laughs> yeah. Right. So shall we do some building? Yeah. Well, that's too right. hot. That's fine. So uh, we have got to stage four. Stage four is um, where we begin to do some painting. Um, oh, now, right. This is where I'm going to go. Rubbish. No, no, right. Let stop being so negative, Natasha, because you've been <laughs> negative. No, you've been negative right from the start, and you are actually it's one of them days, Penny. No, well, I understand that. Um, but no, you put yourself down and you do a lot better than you say you will. I mean, yeah, I do actually when I put my mind to it. Um, right, so stage four is the first time we get the paintbrush out now. What I'm going to attempt to, to sort of talk you through is time management. Yeah. Um, now, when you get to stage four, you paint. <coughs> then you have to wait for the paint to dry. Then you go on to the next stage, which is building something else. Then you build a bit more on something else. Then you paint it. So yeah. what you should really be doing, thinking about doing is do a bit of painting and then well that's drying maybe get on to the next stage and then go I'm happy with that. painting so you have a choice um but you see what we're going to do is we're going to paint this what's that then, then this is what we've built oh yeah sorry then we're going to put a piece on the top and then we're going to paint that same color 
Right. So you have a choice. Do you want to skip stage four and go on to stage five and six and do some building, then introduce that onto what we've already done and then paint the whole lot in one go? Or do you actually want to do it as exactly per, per the instructions and crack on with the painting? First it, one. So we'll do some building and then we'll go back, shall we? Yeah. Right. That's you reckon right. that's the easiest or not? It's personal preference. Um, personally, I don't have one. personally, I would. I tell you what we'll do. No, no. Right. So what we should be doing? Let me let me move my camera. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts, guys. Yeah. Uh, right. So this is stage four, which is paint this, paint the tracks. Personally speaking, I would do the 159 on the tracks and then paint the 53 once that's dry. Then we go on to stage five and we build. We do six, we build a little bit more. Then we have to paint stage six and then introduce it to the part that we've already uh, built and painted. Um, I personally would probably skip that and then do this and then once we get to there we'll paint both of these bits um but also i wouldn't stick those tracks on um right. i would paint them before i stuck them on um so i think you have just chosen what i would probably do yeah um you might even decide that before we paint this we'll go on to stage eight and build a turret so basically what they've done is they've broken this whole model down into three three sections. Yeah. Got the bottom of the tank, the top of the tank, and then the turret. And Peter Webster just said skip the paint until you get built. Um so right. So let's do a chat cat chat catch up. And <laughs> then we can start building some fiddly bits. Well, right, I'm gonna put camera down ready so you oh. don't start me eating. That's fine. That's fine. Right. Uh, Stobart trailer is getting quite huge now after issue 118. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, I know where heavy it is. I keep moving it when I'm doing these shelves. That's why I'm out, out of breath. Um, where am I actually up to? Um, I've got four issues just come through this week, and I've decided not to build them um, purely because I've built and filmed enough to last me until i get back from london um for 15 16 17 118 which look quite simpler issues so um but yeah those four issues they're they're, they're not light uh Teresa is glaring at me and not laughing think i'm in trouble you're always in trouble mike when you're not in trouble you're in trouble for that uh dave MacBill says tasha you're going to become a great modeler in time she's already a great modeler um <laughs> quick well uh dave mac says i'm gonna go say good night ladies i'm up at wow 5 a.m have a great stream and i'll see you again night and chat skip paint until you get built probably a good idea actually uh night dave mac and that is chat caught up so Right, do you remember what we did last time, Tasha? Um, and I'm going to make you the focal point. Yeah, use that. Onto there. I, okay, you're being a little bit funny there, but... Right, no. so let's start with the biggest piece, because we're going to be th adding things to the biggest piece. Oh, okay. So we want... So you can put this to one side. We're not going to. No, we've got yeah. Probably not in this stream. You've got a two. two uh, how did you prefer to cut things off the sprue? Mine's a knife. Not yours is a knife, right? Mm -hmm. so we want to cut off piece A one. A one. Which is the big main tanky bit. Is that a really mm -hmm. good description? So that one. So I know you can hardly see me because you're on the mobile phone. 
Now, no, I've got you up on laptop so I can right. see and watch you through that way. So this is the piece that we need to cut off. Yeah. Look something like this. And then obviously what we need to do is clean that up uh, with some sandpaper or something that I cannot find if it needs that. Um, if you've got like God hands, 4,000 pound nippers, you probably <laughs> won't need to, um, to do anything with it. Do we still need this one? Which one? I... Uh, is it empty? Mm. I th doesn't look like we need it. I, don't um, think we I need personally it. would keep it for spares. Mm. Um, I'll show you some tricks with it later on, but okay. um, you, won't, you won't need it. See, um, what Airfix have done with their starter kits, and it's quite useful. You yeah. start off using things off sprue A. Yeah. And then once sprue A is empty, you then start moving on. Well, now that we've cut that piece off, that's it. That's sprue A finished. Yeah. So it makes it so much easier because you're dealing only with one sprue. True. Um, so I'm looking for a drawer called filing, and I can't find it. So here we go. I've got some sand and sticks already, eh? So um, how are you getting on with your bit? Uh, I've just got a... Do the, the bits where it was stuck on to way. You mean like clean up? Yeah, filing it. We're teaching her words. I'm getting used to it. No, it's fine. If we keep repeating these words, the words that we repeat the most, you'll remember quickest. And if we're saying certain things over and over, they mm -hmm. must be more important than other things. Yeah. Because if we're not saying it that often... It can't be that important, can it? No. Well, really. it is important, but um, clean up is something that you're going to do every single time you cut a piece off. Right. And it is a bore. It is a chore. Yeah, but, but it's got to be done, hasn't it? You've seen the results. So don't forget to use the greatest tool that you own, which is your finger, and just have a feel and you can feel how smooth that is. Yeah, uh, I do that quite a lot afterwards. You can see with your eyes, um, but your eyes can be a little bit deceptive sometimes. Um, but you, you That's can... um, why I had to turn my main light off, because it starts glaring over here. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you might get a little bit confused on this. Because you've got arrows pointing everywhere. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. I'm waiting. I need to wait for you. That to... went right over my head. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, Jobberton. Ah, now this is what I wanted to see. Athol says, evening, Miss Tweety, Natasha and Penny. Hi, Athol. Evening, my, lud, my lord, Peter Webster. Hi, CJ and Dave Mack. And look at me, look at me catching up with the chat. Right, so we have got little, little tiny little bits to put on. Right. Um, and they're all going on the inside. Now, my advice, because there's so many small bits, is maybe, well, you've got two options. Right. Section it off, cut the pieces off, and lay them out so you know them. But as you're an absolute beginner, I'm going to call you an absolute beginner. Um, maybe just do one piece at a time. Now, note the direction of the of the piece. Otherwise, you'll stick things on the wrong way around. Now, you've got an open back there. And you've got, I'm going to call them two pointy bits at the front. Yeah. So want those pointy bits pointing away from you to the right. And then that will match the see how I've got them that sat next to the instructions. Yeah. In the same way as the orientation. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut off piece B20. Oh, before we do that, we need to set up our little glue station. So what I'm gonna do, I haven't got my scissors, but I want a little piece of square card. Right. Unless you've already got your square piece of card from last time. Yeah, I kept it. Okay, and then you will need a fresh one. Get a little piece of you can actually. I'm going to teach you a different trick. 
Oh, Rather than using a piece of card, mm -hmm. right, we already know about using the card as a glue applicator. Yeah. Right, get a cocktail stick and use the cocktail stick as a glue applicator. Oh, it's the first time I've opened these. Yeah. And you'll see just how useful cocktail sticks are. Now, I don't have any cocktail sticks because I ran out and I haven't topped up. Um, so I'm just going to get one of my... I've got some spare pots here. Do you want I know, you said sticks? that last time and it wasn't funny then either. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to get my kebab stick. Um, I did say this before. Uh, you can get some liquid glues but remember we are beginners um so i this is these are the kind of investments that you're going to start making once you decide you like modeling uh mm. so we've got tamia extra thin well let's start with this one so we've got tamia cement which is essentially the same as your poly cement this is a little bit thinner right. but it works in the same way uh we've got tamia extra thin which is Probably every modeler's favorite, but I may not be using much sooner because I've discovered tool cleaner. Um, and then we've got this one, Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, basically the way I tend to use them, if you are bringing the parts together, yeah, I, I will use this Tamiya cement. So I can glue one side, then bring the part together. So mm -hmm. using our A sprue, let's give a little demonstration. So I want to I want to stick these two pieces of sprue together. Mm -hmm. So what I will do, <clears throat> can't get the lid off. This is why I like this holder, because you get a bit more leverage on it, but I still can't do it. Oh, I don't know how tight I screwed that lid up last day. There we go. So what I'll do. I've, I've got the wrong part to demonstrate, but so I'll apply the glue with the brush. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more precise than your poly cement. Then I will bring the parts together. Like I said, I've really, this wasn't a good idea. I've actually, here it is. Right. And that glue hasn't dried yet. Right. Um, so I'll bring the parts together. Then I can hold them, squeeze them, take them, whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. and then after a while, that glue will stick. Right. Okay, now the way I would use the extra thin is if you are able to hold the parts together, you can make, use what we call capillary action. Um, so because that extra thin is by the nature of the word extra thin, mm -hmm. What you'll do is you can hold the parts together. Right. You can touch where the contact point is, and that glue will run in there and it will run all along. So you notice I did one drop on there? Yeah. Now look. Oh, okay. Yep. So that's used capillary action. It's because it's very thin like water. Right. Now if i have very small fiddly parts mm. and i need to hold them with tweezers um i can't find any tweet here we are so i've got some tweezers um let's let's find a stupidly small piece right so here we have our part and we have mm -hmm. this piece here that's stupidly small. So I need to hold this with tweezers. Right. Now, because of that, I don't want to hold it for too long. Mm -hmm. So this will obviously be fixed somewhere. Right. Right. And now what I'll do is I'll use this. Uh, tam this is a, a limey color one. If I can get the lid off. I love this holder because like I say I can use so I am holding it because I haven't got three hands. Um, but this will work exactly the same as extra thin, except that it sets very, very quickly, much quicker than the, the extra thin. So that means oh, so you hold do different things then. Yes. Yeah. Right, got you. 
so the extra thin it's a little bit smellier and apparently it gets warm so if you right. put too much on the plastic it will melt the plastic heat plastic heat melt not um but it's i find i can't hold the tweezers forever um so if i'm doing like a, a one to 72 scale undercarriage supports i want to mm. hold that support in place then right. i'll come in with my glue and i'll give it a little dab and within a second or two i can let go and it'll hold itself right. um, but look they all get the same result as polystyrene cement poly cement that you've got yeah some might argue over the strength of them um but at the end of the day you're sticking two bits of plastic together and they've all done the job now mm -hmm. there's approximately 25 30 pounds worth of investment there right um there you go lord peter webster's got technical again it creates an exothermic reaction producing heat um so obviously you can make do with this glue and you'll get you won't use half of this glue with that kit right. and then by the time you bought by the time you made five or ten kits you'll have more more of this glue than you can shake a stick at um but oh my lid's glued on there look but worth keeping in case uh oh always always it's a it's a good modeling product just because see this is this is where i think people make a mistake um this is better no. so therefore by default people say that's crap yeah it's not crap this is better that's this is good this is better but because people get so hung up on this they think that's crap now right you're an absolute beginner and look at the result you've just created in the last stream with poly cement yeah would you agree with the statement that that poly cement is crap no 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 it's, but it's built it's stuck it together yeah this is this is the thing people go oh poly crap no tammy is better that's that's what it is um so yeah so we're still working with poly cement but like i say once you get to the point where you think yeah i like this model and lark you know if i went and said to you right you need to buy this you need to buy that you need to buy that da, 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 you could quite easily spend three four five hundred pounds on yeah. equipment to build a 10 pound kit worth it probably not no um there you go look this is another little oh guess who forgot to do the lid up so this is another little investment i made um i bought this from ultimate modeling products this is a 3d printed glue hold, glue holder for tamia and it just it, a it looks nice and b um like there's my glue on the table imagine that lid is undone oops i've just knocked it over um this just makes it a little bit more difficult to knock it over yeah um, when you've knocked pots of paint and glue over you start looking at things like holders um so uh Chobberton says excellent penny now i know what the difference is um good i, I hope that was a genuine help um so ah glues tamia how to use like the little holder i like that word exothermic exo means external thermic means heat yeah. so it creates heat on the outside uh which as you can imagine would be a problem if if the heat isn't the same on i'm trying i'm trying to sound like a scientist now but it's probably not working uh i might print one of those tomorrow you go for it peter put your logo on it as well uh right so um do you mind if i use my tamir extra thin no um, here, you, you you're using with, your glue you so what you're going to do is you're going to pop a little bit of glue on your on your bit of um uh don't forget to use the shiny side of the plastic uh, of the cardboard you put a little bit of glue mm -hmm. on there so what we're going to do is we're going to cut piece b20 off um and we're going to clean it up i can't read the instructions 
B20. Now, these are fiddly. Oh, my God, they're small. Yes, I know. No. This is where I get shaky hands. That's okay. Now, these are quite simple. Let me um let me steal the big screen for a second. Yeah, please. I'll and have to watch I'll show this. you this. Um because sometimes I get confused on where to cut and where not to cut. Yeah. So let me do the old. Should we do the sound effects? Yeah. Go zoom, on. Zoom zoom. <laughs> right. So this is B20. There. Let me just zoom out a bit. It trouble it when I do it on 10 times zoom, it does struggle to zoom a bit. Uh, focus, I mean. Right, so there's piece 20. Yep. Right, now we're lucky. You see there's a big stub there, and I'm like, do I cut that post off or not? Yes, yeah. you do. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that off. Now, make sure you hold that piece when you cut it. Yeah, I've learned that. They like to ping over the place. Yes, the do pieces do ping. Um, and then... The piece that we've cut is going to be on display. So we just want to give that a little bit of a file just to make sure it's nice and flat. And it's going to be difficult to hold. And then when we come to piece 21, I'll show you a little trick that I use. Anyone? Do I have to cut that bit off? Yeah, cut it on the flat bit. Mm -hmm. So you should end up with something that looks like that. Which unfortunately is small. Yeah, it looks it. Actually, you don't even need to clean that up. No, I can because it quite well. What you're going to do is you're going to place this piece, probably using tweezers, and you're going to place this into the hole there. And the piece that goes through the hole, hole is going to be on show. I don't know if you can see that that's the piece you've cut off so if you don't want to find it upside you don't... down yes because remember we're oh. building this upside down oh, so that look good. now that i've seen that in place that looks like some kind of light some kind of headlight perhaps now this is where the extra thin is going to come in really really handy because if you're going to use poly cement, I've just lost a piece. Yeah. I'm oh, there it is. To get this so what you're going to do is you're going to pop a little bit of glue on there. Then you've got to put this piece in. You might want to use tweezers. I'm going to advise you to use tweezers. Now, oh, in fact, I don't know. I really don't know. Right. So put that piece in. Just get it in however you can and then push it with your thumbnail. Yep, as in, do I need to put glue on it? Yes. Now, the beauty of using the extra thin, I focused on getting that piece in. Remember, we've done the dry fit, haven't we? You've yeah. got to put that out to put glue in it. Oh, Let me show you how I do it with, with extra thin. There you go, done. I've just touched it with a brush and the glue would have run run through and that's in. That's why I like the extra thin. Have I got to take it out to glue it? You've got to take it out to put a little bit of glue in and then reapply the glue uh, and then put the piece in again. So this is, this is the... Um, the, well, I say it's the issue with smaller scale kits. If you now did a 1 to 48 scale or 1 to 35 scale, that yeah. headlight will be bigger, yeah. so less fiddly. However, because it's bigger, they may actually do it in two or three parts to make it more detailed. Sure. Uh, Horlicks, how are you? Good evening, Penny and Natasha. Happy New Year. Hi, Horlicks. <laughs> If you would like to scroll all the way to the top of the chat, I do have a link for the show. So if you want to join me, you are more than welcome. It is not compulsory. Um, I know you're sometimes a busy person. So um, 
So we have now actually diverged just a little bit. I'm now starting to use extra thin cement. Natasha's still using the, the kit supplied poly cement. There's no issue. What I've just said actually is what a lot of people do is when they go over to the to the Tamiya extra thin, they start to call this poly cement useless or or words that mean useless. It's not that that's useless, it's just that that is better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just because one thing's better than the other doesn't make it crap. No. Um, let me give you a good example. Horlix drives a very posh car. Very posh, yeah. very nice. Does all these bells and whistles. Um, I drive a 50, 56 plate Peugeot 307. It's got rust up the door. Um, it's got no, I have to put a Bluetooth device in just so I can use my Bluetooth radio, uh, my phone on the radio. Mm. Um, but it gets me to work every day. I turn the key, the engine starts. Is my car crap? No, if it's long stop no. to A to B and parked. No. Oh, I also have a bit of trouble in the, in the winter because it's all cold in my car. Now, Horlicks probably gets in his car and he's probably cold for about three seconds and then suddenly it's like a furnace in his car. Mm. Definitely, a, definitely a more luxurious ride in Horlicks's car. And if I had the money, well, I don't know, actually, I'm a bit funny with cars. Um, but, yeah, generally, if I had the money, I'd have Horlicks's car. But I don't. Right. Doing 21 now. Uh, 20, yes. Oh, sorry. I should have focused on you, what shouldn't I? Right, so now you've done 20. Yeah. Now work on piece number 21. Oh, this is exactly fun. the same. So I was going to show you a slightly different trick to cutting pieces off the sprue. If yeah. you're really worried about what I call uh, sprue fling, um, I don't know if you've got any, uh, but... This piece, where's it gone? Someone's stolen it. There's piece 21 there. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a piece of masking tape. I don't want to cover up the piece that I want to cut. I want to just put the piece of masking tape over the piece. Okay. Right. That's too thick. So let's use some thinner. Uh, there you go. Look, I've, I've, there's another nice little device for you. Yeah. Um, it's a 3D printed masking tape holder. And then when you when you when your masking tape empties, you just take this uh, bit out in the middle and you can replace it. No, I've not got any masking tape. Okay. Right. So this is something to look forward to another day. So right. We put our piece of masking tape on there. Yeah. Covering the bit up. Now. Because part of the masking tape is still stuck to the sprue, all right? I cut that. You see, it doesn't fly off. Yeah. It's stuck to the masking tape. Right. So that's a handy little piece. Now, when I remove it from the masking tape, that's when it tends to fly off. Right. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same as we did with piece 20. And pop that in the hole. Uh, mine doesn't want to go in. Yeah, it does want to go in now. Test fit it. Sorry, guys, I'm off camera. It's all right. I probably am cutting that bit off. So this is the difference with the glues, look. Mine yeah. fits perfectly. It's fine. So I'll just put a dab of glue in there, and it's done. You're going to test fit yours. Once you know it fits, you've got to remove it, then put glue, and hope it still fits. But that's, it's good. It's all good. So let's watch. Let's watch you struggle. Uh, not no. I need to start yeah. with your tiny piece. Uh, so struggle. Horlicks is just eating his dinner. Uh, Horlix, LOL. Yes, as long as it gets you to be, it's fit for purpose and all good. I used to have a Peugeot 407 and I loved it. It was a big car but drove really. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny little story. I don't know much about. I'm not brilliant with cars. I don't maintain cars. That's my downfall. Um, so I felt that my car's been a little bit unsteady. Right. Um, 
the road holding didn't seem quite so good. And um, I I did have an incident where it was raining quite heavy, heavy and I just felt the back just seemed to want to give way a little bit on a roundabout. Maybe I was a little bit quick for the weather, but um, so I went and checked. I thought one thing I'll check is my tire pressures. So I thought, well, I want my tire pressures at th about 32, 33. Pumped the first one up, it was 27 PSI. Pumped the next one up, 28 PSI. Third one was 26. Not majorly awful, but obviously needed a pump. Sorry, third one was 29, not 26. Sorry. Got to the fourth. Got to the fourth tire. Hello, Mark. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. How are you? I'm good. We've got no echo today. Uh, I've got it. I've got it sussed. I've got my head wounds in. My you've tummy's had, mooted. You've had Christmas presents, haven't you? I've had Christmas presents. Yeah. When someone comes on after Christmas and they've got a better screen quality than before, it's got to be Christmas, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no? Nope. I'm still using the same um, poo. Anyway, um, I'll just finish my story. So, yeah, I pumped the fourth tyre up. It was 16 PSI. Um, and then I drove the car and it's been driving absolutely brilliant. Got a bit of a pull to the left. Um, but... I'm just going to change the screen a bit so that Natasha is the main focus. Done. Done. You're good at this, aren't you? It took me forever, but I've done it. No, it's fine. It's fine. I've got shaky hands, you see. No, it's fine. It's uh, Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. Right, so now you've done those two tiny fiddly bits. Yeah. You've got two more tiny fiddly bits today. Oh, great. So you've got B12 and B13. And we'll do those exactly the same. Remember the bit that we cut, we don't have to clean because it's not going to be on show. Uh, I'm going to just unzoom a little bit because I don't like, I do like that really good zoom in, but it's very easy to be off camera. Um, so Horlick says, yeah, there's a funny thing. Pull to the left, perhaps track. And what I found is with the test fitting plastic if it's a bit of a tight fit after i use extra thin it lubricate to make it fit in nice yeah until it starts to melt the plastic and then you're stuck with it um it looks to me like 12 and 13 are exactly the same so if you were to accidentally get them muddled up i don't think it would be worth that scale i don't think it would be the end of the world i'm going to do a little bit of cheating i'm going to cut both pieces off and then stick both pieces. It's not really cheating. It's just. And having said that, oh, I, have, I thought I left it. So, and the good thing about this is, you can't fit them in the wrong way because it just won't fit. So, that's a nice fit. So that looks like some kind of hook. So, See, another good thing about this extra thin is because I'm applying the glue from behind, you won't see the actual on the front. You won't see the glue. Um, if you're using poly cement, if you do put a bit too much glue on, it might just squeeze through onto the other side. Um, that in itself isn't a problem, but you'll just have to do a bit of cleanup. So I've just saved myself a bit of cleanup. You know, I've actually just put too much glue on there, which just means I've got a little bit of a mess where you won't see it anyway. Okay, how are you getting on, Natasha? Just cutting the excess off. Okie dokie. But I am slow doing it. Oh, no, it's fine. No, you are going at your pace. Yeah. Slow and steady. So what, what are you working on, Mark? I'm Dotton and Dabben. No, oh Dotton and Dabben. Well, yeah. if you don't mind, I'm actually gonna work on uh, removing these three pieces of cake that I bought from Morrison's yesterday. Three pieces of what? <laughs> removing these three pieces of cake that I got from Morrison's yesterday. It's Morrison. 
It's Aunt Morrison's own version of uh, Mr. Kipling Country Slicers. Oh, mate. Yeah. Remove them from my sight, please. <laughs> it's I when am you, still dieting. It's when you you know you're grown up when you eat things like country slices. There's no no sugary icing on it. There's a bit of fruit in there, and it's mainly cake. I lost a bit. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no, so now you are going to learn the skill of being on your hands and knees, feeling... <laughs> I had to do that with the plane. So... That's why I hate shaky hands. No, it's fine. I need a piece of backing music now, don't I? I, mean, I, I live in hope that I've got enough diamonds to sort of see me through. Cause oh, the and... it, that's what we all do, isn't it? We look at the packet and we're like, oh, I don't think there's enough there. Well, on this particular one I'm working on. Yeah. I had... Just bear with me a sec, um, Mark. I, I, well, I don't know how to control the volume on that. No. Um, but I thought we could use that as uh, Natasha's lost her piece and she's on the floor looking for it. I ain't going to find it because I don't know where it came to. All right. So um, I messed right. up. Okay. No, you know, you haven't messed up. Um, a learning experience. And learn, that's the words I was looking for. It's exactly what I was after. Um, okay, well, we're just going to have to go with uh, go with it. Um, there, there, go. Is, there is a way around it. It's going to be extremely fiddly, but you can always make a part. And that will be quite simple, actually, because all that is is just a round piece of plastic. So we could always make a little circle. Um We'll bodge it. We'll bodge it. I hope so, um, I'm on my hands and knees. Right. Are you sure you want to give up looking for it? I just wish I knew where it pinged to. Well, to be I honest, I don't think I'm going to find it, am I? You'll probably really? hardly notice it anyway at that scale. If it was like 1 to 12 scale, it's gonna, you're going to have a bloody big hole in the middle of your tank. But 1 to 72 scale. So one to see yeah, one to seventy two. You'll hardly notice it. That'll damage. It's just that obviously once you get to uh, yeah, that's what uh, Pete said. It's battle damage loss. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, an idea you could do you could actually drill a hole, maybe remove the whole corner, and call it battle damage. Um, this is the what this is the direction you could go, Natasha. We won't go there today. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, just go with it and call it battle damage. Um, but to be absolutely honest with you, at this scale, I don't think you'll know us. Um, so I if you're know. cool, if you want more time to look for it, we'll give you more time. Um, I mean, you might find it, but once we glue, where's my bit gone? Once we actually glue that onto there, is that the right way around? Yeah, once that's glued onto there like that, and then you aren't going to be able to put it on. Um, if we're half through, halfway through painting and then you find it, then you can always glue it in. Right. So it's your call. Um, you can either look for it or you can move on. Well, but can you see where I'm looking for it? But yeah, no, it's fine. You, you will do. You will do. It's one of them. Yeah. That's why I hate right. shaking hands. No, it's fine. Um, so the next bit is B9 and B8. They, You'll be glad to know that they're slightly bigger. But let me show you how I'll hold the part. Uh, I've got fingernails, so it makes it easier. But this particular part, look, I'll put my finger underneath it. I'll then put my thumb over it. And then 
I'll cut, being careful not to cut my finger. So you can see it's still in my hand. I've still got the, the sprue around my hand. Um, but mm. maybe even consider some kind of a tray. So I've got the tray there, and then I'll drop the piece into the tray. And now I know. I can't find the piece now, but I know it's in the tray somewhere. There we go. So that's, that's something else you could think about. So maybe next time you get a takeaway or something, keep hold of the lid. Yeah. Okay, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It is to me. Well, it's not. It's not the end of the world, Tasha. Well, say, we could always figure a way around it. Um, did I cut eight or nine off? I don't know. I'm nowhere near that from trying to get this little piece in. All right. Okay, so I'll I'll carry on with nine because I've already cut it out, but I'll wait for you until I do eight. Right, I've got one of them in, finally. You obviously like that song, Mark. That was from Take Heart, that was, wasn't it? It was, but it was before that. It was actually from Vision On. Yeah, Vision On, Take when they done yeah. the gallery. Yeah, that's it. It was the gallery music in Heartbeat. That's how I know it. But if you're older than me, you'll know it from Vision, the, the theme from Vision On. I know it from Vision On. Yeah, I'm wrong. <laughs> I am sure my age now. No, oh, God. That's just three for this high old. She's looking for the part, isn't she? This is, right. You are now a modeler, um, Natasha. A what? You are now a modeler. <laughs> Don't feel like one. Right. So what will happen is you will lose a bit, and then you'll go, oh, so I'll carry on without it. You'll start right. to build the next bit, but you're always looking for that little bit as you're building. And then you'll stop, and, oh, I've got, I've got to find it. And then, if you do find that bit before this build is done, you'll be shouting, I found it! And you'll be so excited. Um, right, Lord Peter Webster, I legit lost my grandson once. I didn't know he followed me to the shed and I locked him in. Oh. <laughs> uh, Tash, I lost the fuel cap on my first mini plastic model of the, to the carpet. So you're not alone. I ended up using some some sprue to make one. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to suggest with you. Um, listen, if there's anyone out there watching this now or in the future who hasn't lost a part, I'm sorry, but you're lying to me. Um, I know that I know everyone loses parts. What was the next part? Um, it's B B nine and B eight. Same sizes, but they're slightly bigger, so they're not so difficult to do. So Teresa says, "Sorry, I never applied early. We was out getting our tea. That's not a problem." It was nice when people partake in the chat, but if for whatever reason you can't, then you don't. It's not the law that you have to use chat. So are you using tweezers? Is that helpful? No, because I've got shaky hands. Okay. But what I'm I trying actually, with them. What I actually like is my reverse tweezers. Um, they might be useful if you've got shaky oh. hands. So <laughs> you'll see here, I've got the piece that I glued these earlier. Yeah. Now, obviously, if I let go... I drop the part because that's how tweezers work. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got these tweezers, <coughs> which are reverse tweezers. Yeah. So when you press them, they open. And when you let go, they lock. So if you mm. press them and then hold the piece. Yeah. You see, look, I'm not having to hold it. And I've got that piece on there. Ah, uh, okay. Then I can. I can position the piece in the tweezers and then I can bring the part to where I want. 
remember I said about using the extra thin tam here. So if I put that piece on the floor, uh, on the table, I can bring the part to where I want it. Now I can use the, the extra thin quick setting. Yeah. Okay, hold it for a few seconds. Then I'll squeeze the tweezers and the part stuck to it. Obviously, I haven't glued that, but so they're rather useful. In fact, I perhaps could have thought about doing that. So maybe lock my tweezers in on the part, then cut the part. Maybe it won't fly off. These particular ones have got ceramic tips. Um, I did deliberately, but I think these are for electronics. Um, but okay. I bought ceramic parts because then they're um, um, then they're not like to scratch pieces so much. Um, I've got some conventional ones with various shapes and sizes, um, but these are ordinary tweezers. Um, so actually, Peter, you don't need to. Um, I'll tell you why. Somewhere up, in fact, they're right here. No, they're, they're hinges. I've got some tweezers. What When I bought this, I bought this set of tweezers. And it had every single one of these was uh, was tweezers. Um, but um, I had these set of three ceramics. So in order to fit them into the into the folder, I took three three sets of tweezers out. So I've got three sets of three tweezers that look like that. But I've got one set here and exactly the same set at the hotel. Um, so I've got six pair of tweezers going baggy. And I'm pretty sure you've got a set of tweezers, haven't you? You're a diamond. Me? Yeah. Well, I'm using the ones that come from diamond painting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're tweezers. Yeah. Um, remember poly cement, Tamiya cement. You know, yeah. it's one's better than the other, but you know, you've got what you've got. Um, you might have cheaper ones at the moment. If you feel that you're going to make use of tweezers, then you'll go out one day or or put out on your birthday your Amazon, Amazon wish list. Get yourself a nice set of tweezers put on your Amazon wish list. And I don't know how you do any of that. I tried well, working it out the other day and I couldn't do it. Shall I, shall I tell you the easiest way to learn how to do it? Yeah. Penny, I'm not really sure how to do this. Would you give me some help? That was yeah, easy, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it's um, plenty of people will help you. And the great thing about, um, I mean, I don't know which way, what your viewpoint is on it, but some people don't like giving their address out. Um, mm. Whereas Amazon, Amazon holds your, your address. Yeah. So people click on it and then suddenly without even you just wake up one day there's a knock at the door and you think who the bloody hell's knocking at my door and it's an amazon man with a parcel that you never ordered yeah oh oh do you know what i love i love this little thing that mike's doing now so penny are you saying if someone is stuck all they need to do is ask for help yes that's exactly what i'm saying um this is the wonderful world that we live in um, there are so many lovely people out there that will help you. Um, some will send you actual physical products because they've got so much money and they just want to share it with everyone. Some people can't afford to uh, send you stuff, but they can send you loads of advice. Um, so, so Peter Webster swears by ceramic tweezers, they grip better. And then he says, I got tasks address anyways oh you've got tasha's address so you can send yeah, it. Yeah, she's okay she's i haven't it. got a set of reverse tweezers um but i can certainly send her some tweezers like this but they'll be straight um but i will warn you tasha they're very pointy and very sharp mm. you can easily do yourself some damage but again are you really a true <coughs> true modeler or crafter if you haven't stabbed yourself at least once I haven't stabbed myself yet. Have you not? No. Wow. I've been really careful not to. Wow. You must be gifted. Mm. Yeah. The worst, um, the worst bad habit I've got is holding a craft knife in my hand while holding a paintbrush, doing some painting, 
So I've got a paintbrush and a knife in my hand or a bit of paint and and then this knife is waving all over the place and it ends up going through my thumb or something. And I'm like, oh, that was daft, wasn't it? Yeah, like I, like I was daft dropping a bit. Yeah. We all do daft stuff, don't we? Uh, my yeah. phone is going mad for some reason. Not me. I'm innocent. Oh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a group that I'm on at work. And it's also the uh, Smith Speed admin group. Uh, you, know, you know how, well, you know what we're like. We do yeah. like to discuss stuff, don't we? Anyway, how are you getting on with stage five? Done it. Right. You haven't done it because we've got one more piece to put on and you'll like this. It's a lot easier. Right. So that's piece number B3, which is going to close up the back. Now, I was thinking of saying, could we, should we do that first but obviously if you add a big piece it has the potential to block working and i knew we were going to be working on fiddly parts um i personally would be looking at doing the fiddly parts um before i do the big easy pieces yeah so we're going to cut b3 off now you yeah there's no there's a little lump pointing out there that needs to go on the outside of the tank but don't forget to do what first before you stick this on? Check it. Clean it. Yeah, oh yeah, that one. Yeah, we will drill that into you, Tasha. One day, one day. Right, it's repetition. I'm still learning. I know you are. So remember the three most important rules. The first three rules of modelling, clean up, clean. Oh no, test fit, test fit, test fit. And clean up, clean up, clean up. Q, Q um, remark from Mike. So that I can fit. Like, there's there's a really good example. Remember I said your finger is your best tool? Yeah. So if you look at that. Yeah. So focus. It looks really good. And if I run yeah. the finger across, I can just feel a little tiny lump. There you go. So Penny says also dry fit before gluing. So and also something I didn't mention before. The lower the lower the number, the higher the grit, but yeah. go very lightly. Yes. These um, these super high number grits, you can go quite a lot a bit rougher. Um, right. And if you go like this, um, I've got a 180 grit here. This is the kind of grit that you'd use if you're doing paintwork on wood. Um, if you if you go in really hard with that, you'll uh, you'll rub away half your piece before you even realise it. Um, so I use the higher the lower grits to get the piece to move down, and then get a higher grit. This is an 800. And then just go over the top just to basically you're removing the uh, scratch marks left from the from the other bit of sandpaper or sanded stick and then what do we do once we've done that after we've cleaned up check it we test fit yeah test test fit so mine fits lovely so does mine so again, another advantage of this extra thin glue, I'm holding it there. I can see it fits really nicely. So what I'll do is I'll just run a couple of dots of extra thin from the inside. Yeah. And that will run in using capillary action. And there's no visible glue on the outside. And you will end up with something that looks roughly. There you go. That's there. I sometimes can't get the words out properly. The yeah. lower the number, the coarser the grit. So something that you would probably never ever use on um, on in modelling, but forty grit, four o, is like um, well, it's like rubbing it with stone. Yeah, to get deep scratches. And then um, 3,000 grit 
is like polishing it because the, the it's so fine it's almost like using a piece of leather to polish it right so tell me when you're happy with that just trying to stick it on now that's fine you take the time we're after a, a result that you are happy with something else that i want to mention as well you'll sit down and you'll have a bit of a session you'll do you'll do however long you're able to do and you'll get to the end of that session <coughs> and you might end up saying oh i haven't done anywhere nearly as much as i i plan to do yeah well a you might just be a bad planner um, but if if you don't get as much as done as you've um, wanted to well that's just the way it is you know do you want to rush it and get it done or do you want it done looking nice done looking nice there you go and yours is looking nice because yours look something like mine so we've either messed both of ours up or we've both done a good job so <coughs> right stage six is the next one but i just want to do something before we go any further because mm. we've got a top of the tank we've got a bottom so yeah. i want to go in and i just want to do a little test fit because i want to see what a tank looks like so i'm going to put them together and that's roughly what my tank looks like. Oh, this is nice. the point. I mean, I would have probably already cut the tracks off. Yeah. The tracks on so I can start to see what it looks like. So look, it's, it's tanky like now, isn't it? Yeah. So um, anyway, that's just me. I like to put things together and have a little, right. have a little look. You have to off. How are you, Mark? How are you getting on? Um. I keep looking at it and I keep finding ones what popped off. Oh, I get that. No matter um, how much I roll them and push them or whatever, there's always one or two that's popped off. And I think, did it pop out or did I forget it? I'm really not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm stopping for a minute because. Uh, no. Well, that's that I haven't be got much left to do now. Right, but well, that's a tip we should be sharing, really, isn't it? Take regular breaks, guys. Try and take a five-minute break every hour or something. Find something different to focus your eyes on. You know, that's what they tell you to do when you're using monitors on computers, and we forget to do it when we're crafting, and then we end Definitely. up with why we've got funny eyes. It's like me with my DIY. I just forget to sort of, um, you know, I'm really strict on looking after me back when I'm driving the bus, but I never bother looking after me back when I'm doing stuff at home. And I wonder why I'm sore when I go back to work. True. So, I, you know, I don't know what's worse when my cats are causing mischief or when they're totally quiet and, and being good as gold. I think, I think they're, they're scheming to, to plot on something. That's the worst time is when they're quiet. Yeah. <laughs> in reality, they're probably just sitting in front of the fire. Um, Spirit hides somewhere and I can't find her. Um, yesterday, I, I, I left the house and I couldn't, could not find her. And I had to thought to get treats out of the cupboard. And then she just came out of the living room from somewhere. I don't know where she was. Um, mm. she's got an excellent hiding place because Shadow can't find her or doesn't bother and I can't find her and you can call her and she don't respond anyway wow. right. Right. so stage 6 we need to turn the, the top of the tank over <coughs> doing some, some little <coughs> greebly bits on the top there. And more fiddly bits yeah you're probably going to like these about as much as you did <coughs> Well, just as much as my last ones. Yeah, yeah, you're, oh, not, you're not. You're not going to be. Um, you're not going to be writing a book about this about how good it is. No, not when I got a missing piece. Well, listen. We don't tell anyone yeah. about. Yeah. Our people won't even know us. 
well, it's I hope not, not missing. It's misplaced. It's misplaced. Yes, it's somewhere. It's some... I won't find it. <laughs> right, Natasha, we stop being so negative. I'm not. You may find it. I will. The thing is, you a desk big, somewhere. <laughs> if you've got a big desk or something that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, I've got a big desk. The first place you look is on the floor, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You automatically go, oh, and you're down looking on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. tend to think, well, now I tend to think, well, start looking on the desk first. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Never thought of that. I think this little vacuum cleaner comes into its own because yeah. I hoover everything up on the desk and then there's the tray. Oh, oh yeah. that, these finally came up and then you can have a little look through the parts. I'll obviously empty it before you tidy your desk up and then you can have a little look. So there's all the little bits that I picked up before. Oh, no, that was when I was doing the uh, the F-35 so um, and I picked them all up and I'm like, oh, I should have kept them for sprue goo. Yeah. Now you want to know what sprue goo is, don't you? Yeah. Right. So we haven't dealt with filler yet, but you will at one point, you'll have gaps in your model and you yeah. want to fill them. There's various things that you can use as filler, ranging from uh, gloss, gloss varnish uh, actual yeah. proper filler. Let me see if I can find. There you go. This is this is my favourite filler. This is AK modelling white putty. It's a water soluble one. Um, yeah. If the gap is really really big, you can shove bits of plastic in to fill the hole. Um, but these bits of sprue. Do you remember I, I, when I told you about how glue works? Yeah. Works by melting the plastic. What's the word? Thermo thermo something reaction it yeah. actually melts the plastic um All right. now what a lot of people do is when they get close to the end of their using their tamiya extra thin well maybe just say this much left in the bottom what they do is they fill the bottle up with bits of sprue they cut the sprue really small chuck it all in and it melts the sprue into the into the glue yeah. So when you when you get take the brush out, you end up with this big thick gloopy exothermic. That's the word, um, exothermic. So it'll melt, and then what you're actually doing is you're effectively applying liquid plastic. So you you start putting that in. So I'm trying to find we go. So if I want to fill that gap, yeah. I'm actually applying melted plastic into that gap. And then when it dries, you've now got the actual modeling scale model plastic has filled the hole and it will it will melt into the hole. It will be there. And, but then you need to file it all down. So one day I will make some up for you, but I'm not going to waste all of my glue. I mean, I've got I've got over, over half a tub there, um, but that's that's I'll put that in the advanced category. Yeah. Right, so are you ready to start on the pieces on the top? No, well, I'm doing, I'm working out, working it out. Right, so what order would you do this in? Let me, um, let me steal the big camera for a moment and then we'll ask the audience. So that is stage six. Uh, a lot of people have says it also worked for that acetone. Um, I personally would do pieces B14 and B11 first because they are the fiddly right. bits. B22 looks a bit larger, this bit in the there. Yeah. And B11, I'd probably be looking at getting a pair of tweezers and holding the gun barrel and then sticking the end in. Um, right obviously you've got a bit of a reputation now just be careful when you cut them off the sprue so b14 and b11 are going to be the hardest bits because they're very small and fiddly so let me have a look before you cut them off i can't find the numbers right 
So there's B14. So what you might want to do, I, right. I don't know what your fingernails are like, but the way I would do that is I would hold that like that. Yeah. And then cut it. Right, okay. And drop it from a very low height onto your desk. So like, I'll actually do it. So I'm holding the piece. Yeah. That's it. Make sure you don't cut your fingers. All right. So it's actually in my fingernails right now. And yeah. then just find and I'll drop it. And there it is. And then I don't know how I'm going to clean that up because I can't figure out where that's going. Um, there's a little line on it. Oh, God, I can't even see where we're going to stick it. No, not can I. Oh, I see. Right, so we want that little line. So you, I, to be honest with you, uh, Natasha, I think you really want to be looking at using tweezers for this. Okay. And then you're going to have to do a test bit. And it's going to go on like that. And then we know that test bit. So, again, if you've got your ceramic tweezers... You should know you haven't. But no. It's going to happen when I let go of my tweezers. Yeah. I can't see where it's supposed to go. Well, I've dropped. Right. Okay, let me. So, do you see this little hook? Yeah. Right. Next to it, you've got a little line etched into the into the tank. I'm tr sorry. I'm trying to get. A zoom and a focus. Right. There we go. Can you see that little line etched into the into the tank there? No, because I can't I don't have one on mine. You do have one on yours. Are you looking at the right side? You want the bit with the I'm gonna call these mud flaps. It's it's at the, the back, not this side. This side. You got you got a couple of little hooks there, a little uh, ring that you yeah. in earlier on. It's next to that. Can you see that line? Right on left hand, or rear right, right hand. I don't have it. You do. Trust me, you do, Natasha. Right. So, right. See where no, your where your, your index is. is. That's it. Yeah. Right, look for the look for the little ring that you stuck in earlier on. Yeah. Right, touch the ring with your tweezers. That sounds too wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right. T slightly to the to the left of the hook uh, of the ring, where the ring is. Yeah. Little line. Flat. No, it's not. I can see it's flat. Right, your thumbnail. Yeah. Right. So get your thumbnail in next to the ring. Right. And then run your run gently, run your thumbnail, and it's going to fall into a little line. You'll find a little. It's not flat. Oh. No. Right. Have a look at mine. Right. So, I've lost it now. Right. Let me find something pointy. Let me get a different pair of tweezers out. Something I can point. Right. So, I've got the same shape tweezers as you. Right. So, there's there's the, the, the ring that you've got. Yeah. Right. Can you see just below, you've got that little line. Yeah. Right. Look for that little line on yours. You may may help if you move it around and get the shadow on it because if you hold it at some angles you can't see it so well if you hold it at others it's there oh so it's hiding yes if you like so that's where it is now the piece that you've just cut off or will cut off which i've now lost here it is it actually looks like a waste piece of sprue You need to hold that 
so that there's a little line on it. It looks like you want to sand it off, but don't. Hello, hello. We've got a we've got a guest builder or a guest mm. maker, as you can probably see on the shadow. There he is. We have a close up of the white foot now. Right. So unfortunately, I have that moment where he just wants five ten minutes of fuss, and then he'll That's leave. All right. What birds? He's oh, your hackles are up. What is that? And you're full of sawdust. Is he? He's looking for his. He's looking for his cushion. I usually put his cushion down there. Oh, I've got a spirit as well. Yeah, you're both covered in sawdust. Both of you. He was he's a bit naughty last night. I discovered some he, he's a bit fussy with food. Is he? Oh, let me just catch this because Peter Webbs is going. Uh so I'm gonna say good night, uh all time for the meds. You take care, Peter. Um yeah, I got I went to bed last night. I made myself a cup of hot chocolate. Yeah. Got the remote, went to put YouTube on. He's sitting there drinking my hot chocolate, wasn't he? What the hell? Yeah. So, um, right, are you happy now? Yeah. No, he's not. Oh. You? Sorry, Missy. You've been absolutely beautiful today. And you have been a very wonderful boy. Oh, that's why I don't like you on the craft desk, because you don't care and you knock everything off. Oh, I'm trying to push him off. You pushing his bum? There we go. He's off. Right. Okay. That's his couple of minutes. Uh, right. So yeah. Take care, Peter. Goodbye. Night, Peter. Take care. See you soon. Bye, Peter. Right. So anyway, sorry. All that time I've had big. I stole my big screen. Right. right. So how are you getting on? Done it. You've done it. Yeah. That's so. Um, so I'm going to do mine with my ceramic um, reverse tweezers. Yeah. And because I'm using tweezers, I'm going to use my extra quick drying one. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have to zoom in now, aren't I? I do like my camera. The problem I've got with my camera, I can control it remotely from my mobile phone. But when I have it plugged in with cables... It loses that zoom function on the phone. Mm. Right, so that's my piece. Um, now, I'll be absolutely honest with you, there is a right and a wrong way to do this, but I'm not even going to bother with you mm. because I don't think it's going to make a major difference and I think you'll struggle. So I've got my extra quick drying. Yeah. Hold that piece in place. I'm gonna tap it with the with the glue. Wait a couple of seconds. And then I've gone and lost it. Which one we're we doing. So once that bit is done, we can then work on the other side. Or have you done both of them? No, I've not done both of them yet. Okay, so when you've done that, work on piece B eleven. I zoomed in too much there, didn't I? There we go. Oh, I found it. Right. So, got the tweezers, doing a test fit. That's okay. In. A lot of people have trouble with this scale because um, it is tricky to see. Y your normal scale is about one. Yeah. To, yeah. Your normal scale is about one to thirty-five scale, which is about fifty percent bigger than this is. Um, but I think this is a wonderful kit for a starter. You know where you're struggling. Did you have any tiny bits on the jet provost? 
that you struggled yeah, with? Yeah, I did. And I, um, I may have left a couple of things out and not realising. Like you may the have or you did? I did. <laughs> now it's but It's my first attempt. No, it's, right, it's your benchmark model. Yeah. No matter how good or bad your first model is, if your second one is better, then you're, you're on the right road. Yeah. I like to say you've modified it from the original. Yes. It's a one -off. Yes. Yes. This one. Right. So that's those two fiddly little bits in. Um, I personally would do the machine gun at the front, B17. B I'm calling it machine gun, but you may not know what that is. Nope, didn't know that was a machine thing. A a long pokey bit. Yep. And again, I think this really is a job for tweezers. You can hold the gun barrel, which is the thin bit. Yeah. Test fit. Yeah, see, I'm glad I test fit that because I don't think that's going to fit very well. So I think that's the way I've cut it off. <coughs> Just get a bit of, uh, bit of sandpaper or, or file. And I'm just going to try and hold that in the same position and file that so it's flat. But it will be tricky to do. Because it wants to move. You could cut it flat with a knife, but I think it's going to be easy to do with sandpaper. Yeah. Just as long as, I mean, I might get that angle slightly out. I'm trying to do it 90 degrees to the piece, but if it's 95 degrees, it's obviously not going to fit exactly right. But as long as it's flat. True. And the thing is, it's a machine gun, so it's probably going to be moving around. Yeah. Um, so who's to say it has to be 90 degrees? True. Just so long as if it's flat, you've got a good. Yeah, that's much better. So you've got a nice. Basically, the more surface area you have, the better it's going to stay on. Because if it's not, if it's only on by a tiny bit, you can remember you're going to paint this. Now, I think poly cement might be a better job, actually, because I think that tends to be a bit, um, it kind of gets around it. So I'm actually going to use my Tamiya normal glue, which is pretty much on a par with poly cement. And because it's a bit thicker, it's going to kind of ooze around it. And I think that will hold it on. Okay, and that's my machine gun on. Mine's on. Yours is on. Do you know, yeah. I don't even see you move. Yeah, you two have got so much more patience than what I have. Do you know what? I? So, I had this discussion with someone, and a lot of people say, oh, you've got a lot of patience. You need patience to do diamond painting. Look how long it takes you to do. Um, oh, yeah, like... No, it takes ages. I've got one yeah. on the go now, and I've had it going for about two weeks. Hmm. And it's not necessarily a case of having patience. It's a case of just getting on with you. Just do a little bit until you've had enough, and then you stop and you pick it up. Yeah. Uh, and then when I did that Notre Dame Metal Earth kit, there were stages of that where I, I think it would test the patience of the saint of all saints. Um. So, yeah, it's, yeah, maybe I have got patience. Um, right, so the last piece I've got to do now is piece B22, um, which is the easier piece because it's a bit bigger. Uh, yeah. I say bigger, it's not massive. Um, so we cut that off. We clean it up wherever we need to clean it up. trying to hold the piece as I do the final cut. Now, I have no idea how this is, well, is it hard enough to just to clean it up? So I do apologise, Natasha. 
Okay. It's definitely a step up level wise from the last issue, from the yeah. last stage. But that's what it's all about. Um, I would argue if it, if everything was easy, would it be fun? True. And it would be boring. Yeah, I think so. Um, right. So it's going this way round. And I've just got to try and figure out where it's going to fit. Mm. I can't see anything on there. Right, I think that is, to be honest with you, again, because of the scale, you could just probably glue it on in roughly the right position, and I don't think it would look terrible. Um, they've got a close-up of how it's got to go on, but uh, I'm going to go with this. Um, there's three little dots in there. Just basically find somewhere in roughly that position can you see it there yeah that, that that i'm i'm not unhappy with that um so obviously you've got to you've got to apply the glue somehow um i would probably apply a little touch of glue to the to the small part and then place it on uh the problem you're going to have is if you stick it on and then move it, you're going to get little bits of glue all over the tank. Yeah. So you want to try and aim that, place that exactly right on the first go. Um, again, that's the advantage with having these liquid glues as you place the part. Let me um, try and get a, a zoom in on that. So uh, I, I still made a little bit of a mess, but because I've put the part on before I put the glue on. Yeah. So I'm um, hopefully I'm not coming across as you have to buy this glue. No. The way I'm trying to come across is you've got your glue. I'm now using mine. These are the differences. You may find these liquid glues are no good for you. You know, if you don't no. use them, don't buy them. Um, I just think they're a little bit easier to use. all down to personal preference is it exactly what exactly you find best for you it's like yeah. with the diamond paint and with the squares i find tweezers easy yes yeah we use with the, the tweezers rounds, example quite a lot it's um, not so easy yeah i mean i i try when when you told me you use tweezers i did go out and try and use tweezers for a bit and mm. after a little bit of practice Yes, I can use tweezers, but I'm sorry. I don't know how you do it all the time. I much prefer my pickup pen. Yeah, I can't use tweezers. I did on my very first one, and then I worked out how to use a pen. I'll never go back to tweezers. See, I was in the opposite, because I started off with the that thing. The yeah, thing, no, yeah, but that's stick. crap anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, but everyone works differently. Yeah. And different which why, levels. Which is why you're doing such a good job for only being a second build. Yeah. Mm. That already looks better than anything that I built when I was young of the Apex kit. I did a um, Red Cross Land Rover. Oh, oh yeah. And by the time I'd built it, it looked as though it had already been hit by a mortar. <laughs> Battle damage. That's what, that's what my tank's going to look like with that missing bit. No, it's not. Superficial it's like damage. Bat on had its mirror, its lights taken off it. Yeah, it had. A, it got shot by a sniper. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Some 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 idiot thought, "Oh no, I'll take a tank out with a bullet." Yeah. He's done. <laughs> Good, good, done a good job with the equipment he's got, but well, right. you never know. They probably did do that back in yeah. the days. Well, there you go. Add you know? to the authenticity of it. What? Right. How are you getting on? I've done it, but it's not perfectly. No, right. Well, but I've done it, and I'm happy with it. 
If you right, if your songs you're happy, right. So stage seven, we want to glue this top bit onto the bottom. Now, oh, this is going to be fun. No, it's wait, well, it, it is right now. This is the issue I found with mine. All right, I try and bring it up when I do a test fit. I notice I've got a line. See that gap there? Yeah. Now, the way I've got around that, it might be the way I've glued this back bit on or even the front bit. But if I put the front on like that, lift this up slightly at the back, push it, and then push it down. Can you see I've closed that gap up? Oh, there you I worked it out by watching you. Yeah. So when we come to glue it, and don't glue it yet, no, be applying glue along this edge here, but not this little recessed edge. So Between. along that line and along that line, but oh, so miss them two out. Yes, because right, that, got ya. you see that's going to line up there in the middle. Yeah. Now before got ya. you put glue on, do your yeah. test fit. Have a good look around. See if there's any bits you're not happy with. Um, I wasn't happy on there. That looked a bit rough. So I've taken that off. And I've just got my sandpaper and I've given that a little bit of a smooth. Okay, and I'm happy with that. The other bit I'm not happy with, it may not show, but you see I've got a glue mark there. I've got a glue mark on that last bit. Right, so what I'm going to do with that, I'm just going to get a light bit of sandpaper, give that a little bit of a rub. Yeah. Okay. I've taken, it, taken that down now, look. And then just to get rid of the scratch marks, I'm going to get my 800 grit. Give that a bit of a rub. Okay. It's yep. smooth. You can see where I've sanded it, but it is smooth. Right. And just look, have a little look around. Um, there's a little bit of glue there, but I think that will be fine. And it's a bit rough there. But that'll, I think that'll be okay once I paint it. There's a little bit of a gap there. But I think, yeah. have a little test fit. I could probably deal with that once the glue. So I'm just looking for bits that's going to, I'm going to be a lot harder to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like once I glue this on, that's going to be the main focus. Right. Okay. Now, there might well be a gap at the back as well. Yeah, you can see there, but that's the back. Right, that gap there doesn't look so bad as a big gap. Like there is a big gap there. Yeah, that's the top at the front, so that's going to look terrible. So we are going to focus. Just bear with me a sec. No problem. Bear with me. Hello. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am streaming, but. Sorry, he's just come home. So, yeah, when I come to glue that, I'm going to apply my glue on there, as we should do. Um, and then I'm going to see if I let that sit down. You see that bit's just a little bit lower. So yeah. I might actually just apply a little bit of glue there as well. And I'm going to hold that for a bit. Like if I hold it there, can you see that line has disappeared? Yeah. If I let it sit naturally, I get that big gap. So right. what I'm going to do, I mean, if, the, if that gap was inevitable, right, I'd go with it and then I'd be getting Miss, Miss Filler in there. But I want to try and avoid using filler. So I am going to focus on that. When I come to glue, I'm going to hold it like that. Look, yeah. That gap is completely gone. It means that I might get a bit of the gap at the back. But I think... Yeah, it's just you got to sort of figure out how it's going to go. So you spend a bit of time before you close the tabs up and just sort of have a look. Um, it's probably a little bit difficult for you because you don't necessarily know um, what you're looking at. Um, I think so it's okay. Okay. If you're happy, go for it. I don't know where I am. Or but yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So obviously, you do realize that once you glue this bit on, you can't, if you find that bit, you won't be able to stick it in. No, I know. Okay, that's fine. As long as you are aware. Right. So, sorry, Chobberton, I will come to your question, I promise. 
So a little bit of glue on there. Um, and then I'm just going to apply a little bit extra there because I've got that gap. And then I'm going to stick it on and I'm going to close that gap up and I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. Okay. And push that back down. See, by pushing the back down properly, it does create a gap. At the yeah. front. In fact, I've, I've got that gap. I have got the gap at the front. There's nothing I can do about that. So it looks like I'll be teaching you filling techniques. But that's fine. I'm happy enough with that. And then I don't think there's enough glue in there, actually. It doesn't seem to have worked. I'm happy with that. Good. So that's what we'll do in a moment, give it a couple of minutes to set. And then uh, we'll give it a very gentle tug just to make sure the glue is has gone in okay so you might want to clamp that down as well there's two ways to clamp it one is with possibly pegged there we go so that's nice and simple make sure you don't knock any fiddly bits off but that, that's now clamped down with pegs or if you haven't got pegs or you don't want to use pegs we can just use a bit of masking tape so the way you use the masking tape is you push it down as hard as you can put a bit of tape on and just stick it down like that yeah um, in this particular case if you've got the wide enough clamps just use the clamps but just be very careful at the front because you've got these like that machine gun and i have ended up with a gap so um it's not a lot i can do about that um no so i'll have to deal with that um but no now you've got something that looks like a, like a tank yeah okay so what i would be inclined to do now because i like to um i want to see it tank like now um right we've it's now half coming up for half past 10 we've been yeah. two hours 21 minutes do you yeah. want to do the next stages or do you want to leave that for another day? Um, I, 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 I'm just going to sh show these to Chobberton now. So these are called skinny sticks. These come from Ultimate Modeling Products. Um, they're, they've got a little bit of sponge in the middle and they've got sandpaper on the outside. They come in various grits. And yeah. they've, you've got normal size on this side. This is just like a normal sanding stick. But you know, sometimes you get these little bits and you, you can't get a full size sanding stick in, so you've just got a thinner bit on the end. Um, I bought them to try out, it's quite funny because they asked me what I thought of them, and I said they're very, very, very good. Um, but I won't buy them again. Um, because what I would be inclined to do is um, to get some of these. These are little kebab sticks, or you can get lollipop sticks. Cut them to the thickness that you want. McDonald's coffee stirrers. Um, they're perfect. And then I would glue a piece of sandpaper to it, and you've got exactly the same, except that these aren't, um, these aren't spongy. Like right. they are. But these cost a couple of quid each. These cost about 5p each. So um, you know me, I'm a skin flint. Um, a little trick, a lot of people don't know about this. Uh, you see when it starts to get clogged up, let me just switch my camera. Yeah. Simplest way to clean these, this is why I always wear jeans when I'm modeling. Just get the mm -hmm. stick, bang it on your jeans, and now it's ready to go again. Wow. It makes a mess of your jeans. So um, I don't want to be wearing the Levi 501s that I, I spent 90 quid on. Um, True, you don't want to do that. These are my supermarket own brand jeans. Um, so, yeah, sand away, get your stick clogged up, bang it on your, on your leg, and you're ready to go again. 
Right, so what do you want to do? Top bit. Right. And so leave it there. Two up to stage nine. Eight. Yeah, nine. Nine. Mm. And then we'll have something that looks like a tank. Right, yeah. so in that case, let's skip back to stage four. And I want to cut those uh, tracks off. Right, okay. And then we can dry fit the tracks. And then it's going to look something like a tank then, isn't it? Yeah. And that's going to be more visually pleasing. True. Um, because last time we had a little box, which was a yeah. nice little box. Sorry, I've got the wrong screens up. Um, we had a little box. And like I say it was a nice box. But wouldn't it be nice to finish this build off? Yeah. With something that looks like a tank. Yeah. And then that way, once we've got it looking like a tank, we might actually be really looking forward to the next stage. Yeah, right. that's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, so this is going to need quite a bit of clean-up. Now, beware. I'm just going to steal the full screen again. So these right. tanks have got little recessed lines in them. Yeah. So if we sand away... Um, we're going to lose those those recessed lines. Right. So I want to be quite gentle, and I just want to... If you've got a knife, which I actually don't... Well, I don't have my craft knife. You might want to consider scraping that away as yeah. much as you can, because we're going to sand that line. Now, if we sand that line away, uh, if you're doing an aeroplane, this would be a panel line. This is what we call a recessed panel line. This is a recessed track line. Yeah. If you um, if you sanded too much and got rid of some of that detail, it's not the end of the world because we can rescribe it. But rescribing yeah. is a completely different ball game, and it's something that well it's a bit of an advanced technique so i yeah. have removed a little bit of that panel line but do you know what i'm not going to worry about it too much mm. but yeah try and use your knife on it and right. be precise mainly because if you sand it you're going to get rid of those panel lines right so the thing to look out for right. i'm gonna to have to disappear not a problem Wait, you have you did you have a good new year by the way i did mean to ask Quiet to me, it's just another day. Wow, I spent New Year's yeah. Eve at home. Same with Christmas, really. It's, it's another day for me, yeah. That's fair enough. So, right, so I'll let you go then, Mark. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll uh, still be watching. It's just my phone is getting low on battery, you know, so yeah. Not a worry, charge. not a worry. All right, you what we want to do now is make him use all his battery up until he just. <laughs> Take care, that Mark. Could, Mark. That could possibly happen. Yeah, and you, and keep up with the building. That's looking good. Yeah. Thank you. She's done well there, hasn't she? All right. See you all later. All right. Take See you later. Uh, so Dominique says, Penny, you're a good teacher. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, Do right. you want me to cut both of them off? Yeah. Right, okay. I wasn't it's sure. It's going to look like a tank with half a track, is it? <laughs> well, I like to ask where, what you're up to. Oh, so this is a bit strange. This has got it's got little marks there. But yeah. We're not gluing the tracks into those. There's only two points of contact, but I've got that right, haven't I? Four. Fine, now it goes on that way. Well, this isn't fitting very well. It's a terrible yeah. fit. Ah. This might amuse me when I start cutting and it goes into it and it just feels. Ah. Ah, this all makes... It doesn't make sense. So either I... Oh, hang on. tracks aren't going on you know 
Aren't they? Oh god, nope. I'm gonna have trouble with this one this one then. No you're not. Uh, Is it possible I stuck the sides on the wrong way round? I don't think I did. No. I can't work out what I've done wrong. These aren't going on, you know. No, mine ain't either. No. Friggin' hell, you've got yeah, to push it the right, right hand. hand. There you go. I had to push it right in. So, if you look on... you got two connection points. Yeah. you got a small hole... And then you've got a shaped hole. Yeah. Okay. And if you look on the front of the tank, there's a shaped hole. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're you're making the same noises that I am. Yeah, yeah, trying to fit it in noises. Yep. Right, but that is definitely the right way. It is. It's just not, it's not going, going in. in. Does anyone know anything about that? That the tracks want to go in in the wrong way round. Yeah, mine do. It doesn't. It won't go that way. Do I either got to put it in? Yeah, I think we're going to have to bodge that. <coughs> so Teresa says, is that why you dry fit three times? You, right, they are happy now. Now they've started knocking things down. Yeah. Um, yeah, is that, yeah. So imagine if we'd gone, all right, we've got the part. Um, let's Let's put the glue on and then we'll go. Oh, oh, hang on, it's not fitting. Um, one side wants to go in. Can you get one side in? Yeah. I can't get any sides in. Unless you put it in the wrong way round. I think we're going to have to cheat. I think we're going to have to recreate that hole. Because that's definitely the right way round, isn't it? Yeah. The only option I can think of then is to cut that um, peg smaller or make that hole there rounded. And I'd be mm. fine to just cut that peg down. What we want to do is... Let me just steal the screen. So, if you see, it's a shaped hole. Yeah. The flat bit wants to be on the opposite side. And, but there's, there's the hole. Yep. And it's trying to, that is definitely the right way, isn't it? I mean, it looks like tank tracks. So I think the only way I'm going to get that to fit is to get my knife about a third of the way up on the peg. I'm going to cut down into that. This is what you call a mod. And I just knocked my machine gun off by doing that. Yep, I lost mine and all. So cut into that. Down. And then cut across. So we've created a fat bit on the opposite side. And then Damn that it. should fit. Look at that. Perfect fit. Oh. Done it. Don't ask me how I've done it, but I forced it to fit in. Good. But I lost my machine gun. Yeah, I've lost my machine. Well, I've got... And I have no idea where it went. Right. And I've ripped the top off as well, look. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. That's okay. It just means I ain't put enough glue in. True. Same as me. 
so so that's um yeah that happens from time to time natasha yeah um i don't know if we've done something wrong or if it's it's a bad fitting on the kit um but we both had the exact same problem yeah so um i'm i'm inclined to say but that that was my solution is we just recut that peg so that it fits but now it looks like a tank minus the turret yeah so i'm happy with that so uh, while i'm here i'm just going to glue this um machine gun back in have, well, you got, mind. have you actually lost it yeah oh well what it we'll do is we'll just, we'll just pretend that you've never had a machine gun in the first yeah place. it just got blown off yeah but yeah from that side it looks like it looks like a tank so that's why i want to cut the uh the tracks off so I'll, i'm gonna I'll, I'll cheat i'll do that but you don't want to cut that peg totally away um that yeah. locating hole there fits absolutely fine yeah. so i can put that onto there like so and then i can rotate this True. and then i just want some kind of a peg so it just holds it in roughly the right position now the question i've got is why are we putting glue on those pegs when there's nothing to make contact with it or think, have we think, just have we i think do you know what oh, tasha what i think we put this on upside down no we haven't <laughs> we haven't we haven't no we haven't Right, so if you look on the inside of the tracks, you've got three little dimples. Yeah. That's where those pegs are going to go. And those pegs will line up in the middle of that, so you won't see them. No, you won't. And you don't need to bloody glue it either. It no, well, you there. can glue it. I, I will glue mine, but I'll glue... See, I don't want to glue it now. No um because obviously we've got to paint those tracks and when we've got to paint the inside a slightly different color from the outside yeah it's going to be so much easier to paint off the tank so yeah. we'll continue building this with the tracks off but look at any time i can now put the tracks on yeah. that's not going to fit because i haven't done it but um but it's looking tank like yeah right guys Right, Tasha, sorry. Let's crack on with this next bit. Yeah. And then we'll have a turret. And then it will really look like a tank. Um, so you need parts B1 and B7. There's B1 and there's B7. B7 is sort of a half a cylinder with a hole in the middle. Yeah. And this is going to be a lot easier. So much easier and i'm finding actually i'm doing all this cleanup but in most times i didn't need to because they're they're cleverly putting the sprues uh the sprue nubs yeah where you're not going to see them anyway which is good good engineering true So yeah, I'm 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 intrigued to know if anyone else has built this kit. I'm intrigued to know how they've got on. Right. So I've just done my test fit. It doesn't look like it matters which way round this piece goes, because the hole is in the middle. Um right. And the advantage I've got here again is because I'm using the liquid glue, I can actually glue it from behind, from the inside of the tank. So yeah. I'm not so likely to get glue marks. So that one glue mark I have got on the tank, that's for me using poly cement. No right. messy worker. Okay, you happy for me to glue that on? Go for it. No, be careful. Yeah. Because 
you've got some little bits on the inside of this. All right. The turret is designed so that you can move it. Right. Um, if you get glue on there and then you put the turret on, the turret then won't move. That isn't the end of the world. There is actually a right and wrong way to do this. Yeah. Right. So when you look at this piece B7, yeah. you look where the hole is. Yeah. A thinner bit and a fatter bit. Yes. Right. You want the fatter bit pointing upwards. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue not all the way up to the edge. Okay, because I want to avoid getting glue in the middle, so I'm just okay. pretty much applying glue to the top and the bottom of it. On that little bit? Yeah. Right. Don't apply glue on the edge if we can get away with it. Right, okay. Um, because we don't want too much glue near the edge, because when we put the turret in, we want that to move freely. Like I say, if um, if it doesn't move... It's not the end of the world, but, you know, sometimes we like little gimmicks, like we like the turrets to move. Yeah. We like the wheels to move freely. When we do aeroplanes, we like the propellers to move around. Yeah. It really doesn't matter if it doesn't move. And what's quite interesting is when you do a scale model, say a world war one tank world war two airplane sorry yeah. if the person looking at it is extremely rude the first thing they're going to do is they're going to move your propellers right and then go oh that's nice moves the propeller very very rude thing to do touch someone else's model is extremely rude but if yeah. your propellers don't move around what's going to happen when they turn them no Break it. Snap them off. Which is considerably more ruder than touching the model in the first place. Exactly. Um, but it is a no-no. Um, I don't know if you notice what I've done. Remember that little bit that's bent over? Yeah. How it, I've stuck it up and then I've just run a little bit of extra thin down it. Right. I'm hoping that that will kind of melt it and set it back in place um but that, that's what you should end up with at the end of this stage okay tell me when you oh you've done it i was about to say tell me when you've done it but you have right. trying to keep up so next step we want b15 which is a little c-shaped bit and this shouldn't need any cleanup at all because this is going to be hidden up and then we want the gun barrel, which is the B18. Now, be careful, it's got a little T-bar on the end. Right. But also, you've got a little spoon up halfway down. Yeah. Now, what you're going to need to do very, very gently with a piece of sandpaper is just rub that, but don't press so hard, too hard right. on because you want to keep this as a cylinder. If you rub hard with sandpaper, you're going to create a flat spot and it'll look funny. Right. Um, it's a bit naughty having a... Oh, we're missing a piece, guys. Which one's that one? Oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. So if you look at the end of the turret, it's actually half yeah. missing. Yeah. But that is on purpose. Mm. What's what's going to happen is um, you've got bits to put over the top of that, and yeah. gun barrel is a little obviously going to be a little bit too um, too thick. So you put all the bits over it first, and then you uh, put the gun barrel end of the gun barrel in last. Right. So how are you getting on with that? Okay. Okay. So, when we've d have you done it? No, I've just got to cut off the long thing. That's okay. Cut off the long thing. By long thing, you mean the gun, uh, the uh, 
gun barrel. Yep. There we go. So. <laughs> It's off though. So just giving me a bit of time to do uh, to do test fitting. Okay. Okay, you might have a little struggle here. And now I can see why ah I can see why there's a right and a wrong way to do this now. Oh you're gonna love this. I won't, will I? No, you will love it. <laughs> if you can get the result, you will love it. But I would have strongly advise you to use tweezers. Um, right, are you ready for the next stage? Yeah, I've got to work out how you put it on. Right, that's okay. Right, so. Right, so the way you're going to put this gun barrel on... Right. I don't know if there's a right and a wrong way, but um, if you hold the, the uh, this bit upside down, hold the gun barrel so that the missing piece is on the right hand side and pop that through. And then you'll see two little notches of the bit you've just uh, glued in. Okay. That will rest in the middle there. Right, so okay. leave it to move. Right, now my advice is hold it like this, right? And then you can use those two fingers to lock that gun barrel in. Can you see how I've locked it in? I can pull that gun barrel tight and move my fingers as far up as I can. Okay, now you will struggle with the glue that you're using. I'm ever so sorry. Got it. So there's a little bit of detail on the in, on one side of this, this C-shaped bit. That yeah. wants to go on that side. And what this is going to do, you're going to glue that in, and that's going to stop that gun barrel from coming back out. Does that go, does that go behind it? It goes over the top of it. Right, okay. So, this hasn't been glued in, but it's going to look something like that when it's finished. You see, it's going to hold that gun barrel in. Now, yeah. if you successfully manage to avoid those bits there, this gun barrel will move. Yeah? Yeah. If you don't, it just means that that gun barrel will be locked in place, which is not the end of the world. I so don't you, I don't get how you put the C bit on. Right. Okay. Let me show you again then. Right. So we're putting the gun barrel in. You see, we've got that bit there. Yeah. That's where there's a missing piece. Right. That wants to go in. I say missing piece, but. So that's twisted round. So you've got two little notches in there. All right. This wants to go. It will sit inside that. So you will create this little pivot point. Okay. Oh, uh, right. So it goes over it. Yes. Then we have this piece, which goes over the top. Now, there's a little line on the bottom there. That wants to go in. You'll see there's a little gap there. And that will go over and that will lock it in place. Now, this is where your thin glue is probably going to be better than the glue you've got. But that's fine. Um, there you go. And then you're going to glue that in. Now, what I'm going to say to you yeah. is... If you get a gun barrel that moves, you really have done well because using the glue that you're using, applying it in the way that you're applying it, you're going to be very, very, and how fiddly this is, you're going to be very lucky. Um, with the glue that I've got, look, to glue mine in, all I've got to do is just touch there. 
Yeah. And that will set. And I will most likely be able to move. So you see how precise this glue is? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're using glue that isn't as precise. So, honestly, if you've got a gun, gun barrel that moves, then you can really pat yourself on the back because you are some kind of miracle worker. Um, I've got to be honest with you. If I was doing it the way you're doing it with the kit stuff, I would just chuck a load of glue in there and go, yeah, that's, I'm not going to be able to do that. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to give it a go. Okay. So I need to put you on full, don't I? Are oh, you work a little bit off camera? Um, so Facebook unit says hi both. I could have sworn that came up as Fran. Um, but look, as you can see on my system, it comes up as Facebook user. Yeah. So um it might be someone we we know. It might be someone totally new. If you're new and welcome to the channel. Um, I am trying to teach. I'm doing I think Natasha is doing a good job at learning. Um, but we're teaching, we're going through all the stages of doing scale model building and um, getting Natasha up to a stage where she's confident and competent. Um, at the moment, she's trying. She's a lot more competent than she makes out. She just needs to be confident. And usually the way you get confident is to do it successfully a few times. Um, I think all we can really do with that is just leave it for a bit. And I think I've glued my turret in. Yeah. Uh, my gun barrel. So, um, but that's fine. It's not a major problem. Um, right. So all we can really do is give that a short moment of time. Because that glue really needs to set a little for a little bit. I think oh. my my glue is a little bit quicker setting than you. My my extra thin is a bit quicker setting. Um, so I'm gonna have to give you a bit more time with the poly. Yeah, I'm still struggling trying to get. Yeah, it's fine. Cool. Um, well, look, do you wanna do you wanna chat to to our lovely viewers for a bit? And I'm gonna go and make myself a coffee. No worries. You do you mind? No, I don't mind. Um, I think now that the cats have wrecked the house, they've calmed down a little bit, <laughs> uh, which is a bonus. But right, I'll see you in about two or three minutes. Okay. So, right, I still can't do this, see? Can't work it out. But I'll keep trying, as always. I ain't going to do it, I tell you now, I'd end up doing it still. How is everybody? Hope everybody's well. Anyone up too much? Oh, I'll give up with this, see, tell you. You home right now. I might just worked it out. I ain't gonna get back. I don't want to get it back out. Did I hear you say you've worked it out? Yeah, but I haven't got the, the bar thing stuck properly. Okay. So I don't know how you do that. I got the C in, but probably the wrong way around. Right. Okay. So maybe just pop your finger in and then just wiggle it around. Push the bar down with one finger and then with your other hand just wiggle it around see if you can get it in. But it does move. That's fine. Oh, you duck really, really well then. Oh, it will fall out the other end. Will it fall out the other end? That's probably why it's moving then. It will move, but I can't work out how you do it. You you mean you can't get the C bit in? The C bit's in. Right. Is it but... is it sticking? That part can fall out. Ah, okay, that's not in. You need to get that C bit out then before it sticks, before it sets. I haven't um, glued it. You haven't glued it? No. Oh, no, that's fine then. Right, so take the C bit out. Okay. Is yours clipped in then? 
Yeah, mine clicked in, I but wondered, if I turn I my barrel it was... around, you can get it out. Yeah, I wondered that because mine seemed a bit of a tight fit. Um, but I think once it's on the, the main tank, I don't yeah. think it'll fall out. Right. So what you want to do then is put, just put the gun barrel in and just sort of line it up in the middle and you you can't see on mine now because i've glued the c bit in but just try and find those little locating bits just have a feel just keep pulling the gun barrel up and moving it around i can move it yeah but just look you're trying to you if you look halfway down i'm pointing at the screen as though you're going to see it <laughs> uh, so you want that bar going straight across, not up and down. There we are. And it should rest roughly there. There you go. You've got it. Right, got it. So and then it's still you want to put the C-shaped bit in so yeah. that it's facing, it's pointing downwards. And then that will... But does the C bit have to go over it? Yes. The C bit... Right, that's where I haven't got it on. Why did it make it still, though? Take that bit out before I end up breaking it. Right, I'm back now and I'm armed with coffee. Yeah. Sorry, sometimes. I can't explain things I need to show you, but in this instance, showing you or telling you doesn't seem to work. I can't seem to get it across. It's all right. You. Don't worry. I will work it out. Okay. Are you going to be like a constipated mathematician and work it out with a pencil? Yeah. That was my joke of the day. That was a terrible joke, though, wasn't it? <laughs> Hello. But I promise you, once you get through this bit and you do the next bit, you're going to love it. Okay. Once you get to the point where you can fix right. that gun barrel, I do like the way that Airfix do their, their turrets on start sets. Yeah. It's nice and simple and it just works. No, I can't do it without it being still. The only way I can do it is putting this C in first and then sticking it in, but it's not going to do it. Homewrecker has just joined the show. Homewrecker? Who's yeah. Homewrecker? She's wrecking my home. Oh, Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. Could be the fri fibro she gets confused. Okay, fair enough. Um... I mean, now might be a good time to take a, to take a break. Yeah, I'm not getting this C on at all. It's okay, then. Totally not working for me yet. Okay, in that case, then I'm going to recommend we stop. Yeah. Shame we can't get more done. But obviously, if we have this time to stop, then we stop. And then maybe tomorrow you could have a little look. Yeah. If you can't figure it out in five minutes tomorrow, we'll leave it for the next day. Yeah. Um, it's no shame in not getting it done today. Um, see, what don't help, what does help and what doesn't help is people do these one-hour challenges. Yeah. Spent about five or six hours on this. Um, but, you know, obviously speed challenges is, is a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Um, but, look, what you can do, you've got one of the, one of the tracks on. You can put the uh, turret roughly on where it should go. And look, we've got something that looks like a tank now. True. So, um, yeah. I've got both my wheels on. Yeah. So you haven't glued them on, though, have you? No. Good. Right. So, yeah, just leave it there, then. I'll get it. I'll work it out eventually. Yeah, no, it's fine. No shame in not being able to do it tonight. 
uh, we have been working on this and we've had some really hard bits to do compared to, to the first stage. True. I, and, you know, I, I kind of said, oh, let's do a tank because I think a tank will be easier. Yeah. See, the trouble with doing a 1 to 72 scale tank is there are some little fiddly bits on it. True. Um, but it's given you a bit of a range, haven't you? Hasn't it? Yeah. You know, we know the easy bits and you know the hard bits. True. Um, doesn't matter what kit you do, there's going to be harder bits. And for that, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry. But, you know. Oh, I will figure it out. Yep. Yeah, no, that's fine. So have a little play with it tomorrow. Um, and just have a little look. Obviously, don't go further than this stage. But, yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm happy what we've done. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Good, good. Are you still thinking you've done a better job on this than you did on the Jet Provost? Yeah, I've still got a little few mistakes on it, like the glue. Yeah, but will do. I'm learning as I go along. I think, um, I think you'll have to do quite a few kits before you get... Um, a kit that you know you'll get one that you say oh that's perfect yeah in fact i don't think you'll ever make a kit you say you're perfect because we are we are very critical people our modelers aren't we yeah and, and it's easy to judge yourself as well yeah but I've, I've said before that um i'll always guarantee you that someone will come along and go they'll look at and they'll go that's really good and yeah. then you'll go, yeah, but I'm not happy with such and such a bit. And it's like, why can't you just take the compliment? Yeah. Sorry, I've just... We all have the critic stuff going on. There's no no worse critic than ourselves. No. Whatever we do, we'll, we'll find something to be unhappy about. Yeah. So... Whew. I've just dipped a cocktail stick in water and then just wiped the inside of my Tamiya glue bottles. And that's the result. There you go. I know. I mean, some of it is dust. Right. So. Um, right. It's like reading a long paragraph. Then once you're a couple of lines down, we go got to go back to the beginning to try and understand it. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, so without going into details, obviously Natasha's got a couple of issues that she has to tackle with. Um, so, you know, it's like Chris and his, his um, blindness. You know, when you take that into account, he does a good job. Um, but, yeah. Um, but Teresa says she's doing well, though. And I totally agree. Um so I think maybe that's just its way of telling you, take a little break. Yeah. That's right. Chuck it on the floor, break it. <laughs> it's not broken. You do like that, don't you? Yeah, it's my first one, and I'm yep. quite, quite proud of myself for even attempting Good. that one. And you should be. You should be. Because I know I've got two that you haven't got. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, you know what, I'll just give them a go on. in the background. Yeah. So, so I'll give um, it a go. Mm. No harm in that. But no, I think you should be proud of yourself with the Jet Provost. And you should be proud of what you've achieved so far on this one. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Everyone has some difficulties. I'm not a teacher, so I can't deal. I don't know how to deal with. Uh, individual issues I can only show you basically the way I show you is I show you how I do it yeah um, that may not work for you um, there may be people who've been watching this going that's not how I would do it but I got the result I wanted by doing it my way yeah I did it my way mm. um, yeah no I think you've done really well and I'm not just saying that just to be nice. Um, <laughs> oh, really? I asked a question in the Facebook group about a week yeah. ago. And um, someone's just given me an answer. And I'm like, really? 
even though someone else had sent a picture to answer it and i went ah oh, i got it now a week later he's gone oh there it is right um so yeah i'm enjoying life now um i have got i'm off to london day after tomorrow yeah um i tell you what i i feel like this last three weeks someone's pressed the reset button and uh, i'm just like um i've had a really nice time at kilmarnock normally i don't enjoy kilmarnock mm. i do me three weeks at kilmarnock because i have to and then i do me london but like i say all the time there's advantages and disadvantages london is nice because i earn the money um but i am away from home i try my best to get the hobby and done um but i realistically i can't do the same level of hobbying as i can at home um quality and quality goes out the window a bit um which is why i try and be three weeks ahead on my videos um sorry i'm gonna have to take this jump off i put the heating on it's really kicked in <coughs> oh this is what i do all day long now mm. i put the heating on i take my jumper off i still get warm so i turn the heating off then it starts to get cold yeah uh, i put a jumper on but i can't find that jumper so i put a different one on so yeah I, I do that four different jumpers in a day yeah <laughs> and you don't need to wear that many either well no you can never find it <laughs> yeah um so yeah so i'm off on sunday i've got my train ticket booked um i've got the middle what i call a middle train i'm always after that early train um but he's i think it's like half past 10 that i'll be leaving so it's not too early yeah and if i am ready i'll try and get an hour earlier one um so sunday night i'll have me uh i've got my channel update all made i haven't uploaded it yet um probably nothing coming out mondays while i'm away um so i don't well, you'll, I'll, a lot of this i'll explain in the channel updates um i'm going to be moving robocop and the et to a monday and i'm going to be running them fortnightly rather than weekly because i'm i'm getting like well obviously there's been delays because of christmas so I'll, I'll give them that um but these fan homes they come out like every five or six weeks yeah um so if you're getting four issues every five weeks that's not working um i'm a little bit worried about the gauntlet i'm i'm still a little bit ahead on the gauntlet um but if that keeps if that if i get issue if i get a pack every six weeks the five issues is going to run out isn't it yeah um so i have tried to go down to the gauntlet one a week um so the robocop i've still got robocop penciled in for monday yeah um because the packs may, but i might get two packs come tomorrow um doubtful because i don't tend to get parcels on a saturday um right. but there is still time to film them and get them out but let's expect nothing but once i'm back from london i think you'll find that you'll get robocop one monday and et the next um you might in fact i'm not even going to put the ets out because i've got two issues and i've got to wait a month for the next one so tuesday it takes time, doesn't it yeah tuesday is warhammer day um now i had a few issues at the hotel i wasn't able to film so much um, so I've not got a, a Warhammer coming out this coming Tuesday. I don't think I'll have time to get one done. Um, but I'll be taking the Warhammers with me as I always do. And hopefully I'll get one out for the 16th of January. Um, Eddie Stobart, I have filmed the next four weeks. That's coming out on Wednesday. Um, now, I'm still doing multiple issues each week um i've got 106 coming out on the 10th of january that will be a single issue because it was a complicated one uh 107 108 were coming out together um that came out longer than i wanted it to but yeah i got two issues out 
Then we've got 109, 110, and 111 together. I think that's start work on the trailer. Uh, and then we've got 112, 113, 114 together. Yeah. Um, you can't see it too well, but there is the, the Eddie Stobart trailer um, up to issue 114. Um, so that takes us to the week that I'm on holiday. I have the next four issues, um, which I have not built yet, and I'm not going. That's 109. Um, oh, there's four issues there. So this okay. is the next pack. They look quite simple issues. Yeah. I'm going to build these two issues per, per video. Um, now, hopefully, by the time I come uh, finish my holiday, the next four issues will come. Um, but those four issues there ah those issues and the next pack i'm going to do two two issues per video then i should be just a few issues behind uh, so i'm going to do one issue per vi video regardless of how big or lo uh, long or short it is um thursday's gauntlet's coming out now i wanted to do one issue per one stage per video um but one of them um again you can see the gauntlet there not very big um the the basically we i finished off the index finger now that's what the next the, the next pack is um but then you've got from issue 35 onwards you've got the the bit below and um, what do you call it the um whatever that bit is oh, i know what part you mean yeah so we've we've done this bit and we've done two fingers we've yes. got this bit there um the first stage 34 is just here's some parts wait till next week um so i've done that as a double issue right. uh, so i I might I might run into trouble, but I am now strictly down to one issue per per uh, video. Um, Friday, I am starting a new project, but it won't start till February. Um, okay. I'm rather excited about this okay. um, because it's a project I've been wanting to do ever since the Bismarck came out. Um, when a new part work comes out i wanted to do a scale model equivalent um to see if maybe i can produce something better for cheaper than the part work part works have the advantage in that you pay a small amount every week in this case 11 pounds whereas yeah. a scale model you've got to buy the whole scale model um the part work in question is the harshet lancaster uh the dam busters one to 32 scale uh die cast with motors and everything it looks really good some people are a bit skeptical of it because of the, the issues we had with the spitfire i decided not to um to do the part work instead i'm buying the hong kong version hong kong models version of the one to 32 lancaster so i will be doing a big and i mean big it's the biggest scale model I'll have ever done. Um, but I'm not doing it in a normal scale model way. Did right. uh, I just kick? I'm so sorry, Spirit. I didn't mean to kick you. But you will sit under my desk where my feet are. Um, so I will be doing it in very small stages. And I'll be doing it over 130 weeks or 120 or how many issues the, the Lancaster comes out. Um I've had help and support from Building with the Boys, um, who's going to help me out by lending me his videos. Obviously, I won't release my video before he does. Um, I've also had a lot of advice from Nigel's modeling bench. Um, he is one of the best scale modelers I know. I've asked him loads of questions already. Um, am I doing the right kit? Uh, the kit that I'm buying is £300 um border models do one for nearly 600 so you would kind of expect it to be better yeah. uh, and in some respects it is um but at the end of the day i'm trying to cut costs 
You know, I, yeah. I want people to look at this and go, yeah, the harsh jet's better, or mm, actually I'll do the scale model because that'll be yeah. an alternative. Um, so the Hong Kong version is is apparently is a really good kit. So we'll we'll get that done. Um, <clears throat> so the, the video format will be um, me taking building with a boy's build, just the builder will cut all, all of his I don't want to replicate the whole video because I want you to be able to say, oh, I want to see the full video. Right, here's the link. Go over to his channel. So I will react to his building. Um, then I will try to build just that stage on the scale model. So stage one will be I'll probably paint some of the interior and then I'll put together one of the propellers. Yeah. Um, Obviously, there's going to be bits that I've got to do that you won't do on the on the Harshet version, and then we'll do a little rundown on the costs. And I'm I'm going to design a little graph so you can see how much I've spent, how much the costs have landed up. Yeah. And my I my hypothesis is that I can get a very good model at the end of it, probably the same or better than Harshet's. For about a thousand pounds less that's my hypothesis yeah. um, but we'll see how it goes that's all you can do can't you yeah and i've got a nice little surprise for well not a surprise but i've had a chat with scott and i said well when we've done the whole bill which is going to be about two and a half years away um i'm going to take my model and i'm going to go down and see building with the boys and we're going to compare the two models um, That's a good idea. side by side. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll have a nice little comparison and we'll see what happens. So that will be on a Friday. And I think Friday is a really good day because weekdays I do part works. Um, yeah. And then on a, suddenly on a Friday, I'll be doing something that's part, part work, part scale model. And then Saturday I'll go into my scale models now, on a Sunday, starting on the 14th of January, it will be in a regular series of Mojo builds, which I yeah. think I mentioned at the start. Um, so, obviously, when it's channel update day, there'll be no Mojo build. Um, but I'll give you a bit of a spoiler because that's all I've done. Yeah. Um, the first Mojo build is going to be this Mary Rose. Um, it was actually done as a Christmas video, so there is Christmas music, but I've done a bit of editing. Yeah. Uh, that's the first one. And the second one is this Big Ben, which I was supposed to be doing with building with the boys. Well, not with him, but he was he did a live stream, but I wasn't able to make it. Um, yeah. I put this together today and let, bear with me a sec. Bear with me. This isn't going to be fantastic because we've got the heater on, we've got the hall light on, and I've still got the light from the monitors. But I'll just darken the room as much as I can. And if I stand there... I'll have to take the glare out. Yeah. I can't switch it on. There we go. We see it a little bit, but not not a massive amount. No, I can see it though. Yeah. Hang on, let me turn this camera off. Yeah, you can't see it too well, but um. I can see it's lit though. Yeah, it is lit up, but it, it looks really nice. Um, it does look good. It's got these um. I can only really describe it as tracing paper okay. uh, they've used as diffusers and it's done a really nice job. Um, it is a bit of hassle putting this paper in, but um, it works. It does work a treat, um, but it does look better in the pitch black. Yeah. Cause you can see the lighting better. Yeah. And I've also, um, I, I didn't show this on camera because I didn't want someone copying me. Um, I actually used the wrong batteries 
um, I didn't have the correct batteries. Um, <coughs> I had these batteries which were too small. Um, I actually still, I, I had these glasses, yeah, um, which I don't use. Um, and I took the batteries out, and they were a little bit small. Um, right. so what I did is I put three batteries in. And then I pulled the, you've got like, you know, inside a battery compartment, you have a spring. So I pulled the spring out to make it stick out a bit more. And I put some foam in as spacers to keep it pushed out. Same voltage, they're just different size batteries. So Definitely. I did want to show that on stream because technically speaking, you're fiddling about with electronics in a way that you shouldn't really do it. Um, but it works fine. Um, but you'll see it flashing every now and again. Yeah. Actually, when I shake it, that's just where the uh, the contacts have just not quite making contact. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy with it. Um, and it's it's not bad. The only trouble with these Mojo builds, they do work out quite expensive. Um, by that I mean, <coughs> if you bought a ten pound scale model. Like this um, Sherman Firefly that we're doing, yeah, that costs round about a ten, well, seven to seven to eleven quid, depending on where you buy it. True. Um, you could knock that out in a day if you were just getting on with it and focusing on it. You could knock that out in a day. Yeah. Let's call it for sake of math. Let's call it a tenner. Um, so if you were modelling every day, if you were doing Airfix starter sets. You're talking seventy pound a week on on kits, aren't you? Yeah. Now, if I was to go out and buy, um, let's think of a model I've got. Um, I've got an F eighteen up there. I think that cost me seventy quid. Now, if I sat down and cracked on with it, did a little bit every day, that might take me a month to build. True. Now, seventy quid, thirty five. That's twelve and a half pound a week. So it's it's a quarter of the cost because yeah. it's more it costs more money, but you get more kit with it, more involved. Um, I got another kit cost me over a hundred quid, but I think that take me ages to build. Um, okay. So, but at the same time, these big kits you work. I mean, you might spend ten hours inside the cockpit, and you're making a cockpit, and all you've got to show for it is a cockpit. Um, which doesn't really boost the mojo much, does it? No. Um, these, air, I mean, this this was a real mojo one for me. Uh, this is this is the F uh, the uh, the F thirty five that I did for the New Year build. That yeah. two hours work, and I produced a hell of a lot in two hours. And um, I'm like, oh. Oh, brilliant. That's what I can achieve in two hours. I want to crack on and get more done. And I want to spend like every spare minute I've got awake making kits now. Um, it's an expensive way to build your, boost your mojo. Yeah. But it does the job. True. I do um, agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I've said this about diamond painting kits. Yeah. It's, um, these little cheap ones that you can get for a couple of quid. Um, yeah, they were a couple of quid, and but they you'll have them done in a what are they, people? Some people call them what do they call them appetizers? Yeah, appetizers. Really yeah, are. appetizers because they're quick and easy. Um, now, all right, fine. They might cost you say four or five quid, um, yeah. but they you'll have them done in a couple of day, a day or two. True. So you're talking what twenty, thirty quid a week. Yeah, you get yourself a massive, uh, massive uh, custom from Smith's Beads. Yeah, okay, it might cost you 50, 60 quid. But how long have you been working on Hulk? Uh, let's say four months. Four months. So yeah. if you put, let's say, let, I'm just making a figure up here, let's say that cost you 50 quid. Yeah. Take it into account how many hours you spent on that. Yeah. How much do you think that's cost you an hour? A Not quid, a lot. two quid, About yeah, that. yeah. Whereas if you go out and spend three or four quid on a little diamond paint and you get it done in an hour, what are you doing for the rest of the week? 
So you've got to buy lots of them to keep you going, haven't you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's why I think the bigger bigger models, they work out. Yes, you've got the outlay. Um, but as I say, this this um, Hong Kong models, Lancaster, even if I sat there and actually just did absolutely nothing but this kit, yeah, you know, it's 350 quid. But it's going to take me ages to do. I ain't going to get that done in a day, am I? Not with a wingspan like well, one wing I think is about that long. Hang yeah. on, is it? 90, 90. Well, when it's assembled, it won't fit on the desk. Because my cutting mat is 88 centimeters. This is 94 centimeter wingspan. Bloody hell. Yeah, it's gonna be huge. Um and it's not the biggest model I ever plan on doing. No. Um, funnily enough. The B-52 in 1 to 48 scale is bigger than the 1 to 32 scale Lancaster. I think I would struggle to get one wing on the desk. Yeah. Um, it is that massive. But, um, yeah, it's um, – this is – I mean, I'm planning all these big projects. This is the first massive project that I'm actually going to go to, to get through. Yeah. Um, I've got a big problem, guys. Why? Barco tin is run empty. And I'm looking for my pouch. Pouch of tobacco and I don't know what I've done with it. And until I find it, I can't smoke. So you know what I'm like with my desk. Um I know where it was and I don't want to dig too deep because I know the trick is is to not move anything that wasn't that I haven't touched today. Yeah. Because uh, I know it's oh yeah. Got it. I'm happy. That's the main uh, thing. So Natasha, what yeah. have you uh, been up to? Obviously, what you can tell us. Um, not a lot really. I think it's not gonna a be, lot. Yeah. No. Um, you got any trips planned or anything? Going out for a birthday meal next Friday. Ooh, nice. Whose birthday? Rachel's. Okay. So I'm going out to meet Does that family. mean in a couple yeah. of months' time you're going out for birthday meal for your birthday? More than likely. I always do it a couple of days before, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead so, of on the day. Did I tell you I've got an extra week's holiday? I think you might have done. Oh, I'm well chuffed. My yeah. boss... My boss messaged me, or one of my bosses messaged me today. Oh, you've got some excess holidays to use up, so I've given you the week beginning of the 11th of March off. He says, or oh, alternatively, you could sell it back to the company. I'm thinking, why would I want to sell that back to the company? Exactly. So um, what's basically going to happen, I'm off to London for three weeks. Then I'm on holiday for a week, which is my normal holiday. Then in London for three weeks. Then I'm in Kilmarnock for two weeks, not yeah. three. Then I'm on holiday for a week. Back to London for three weeks. Then my natural week holiday. Wow. So in the next 13 weeks, I've got three weeks holiday. Wow. So but Not bad, that though. Well, it ain't going to happen all the time. Um, but it means that... I mean, obviously, I've got this unexpected holiday because I thought I would be finishing this desk in three weeks' time when I'm yeah. back from holiday. <clears throat> so I've got an awful lot done. I've had a week and a half off. Um, so obviously, I managed to crack on with things. The yeah. plan is now, when I come back on holiday next time, is to get all these little things done. Um, I've got... Um, like I've got this six-way light switch, yeah. and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna wire in things like the lights. Um, I've got a two-way plug socket which I'm gonna wire in. Um, so I don't know if you remember I said I did the uh, the extractor fans. I, yeah. I've got a little switch for it. I've actually decided that's gonna be the better way to go. Uh, I'm trying to block. There we go. So I've got a six-way. So my, my extractor fans will be on one of those. So yeah. when I when I have the uh, the spray booth done, first thing I'll do is I'll flick one one switch 
one switch for the extractor fan and one for the lights so it'll all be controlled by switches um these two lights that i you can't see them but obviously you can see the effect yeah. that's going to be wired in um i'm then going to have a double plug socket which I've, i'm going to put onto the desk on the side um i've got a double plug socket on the middle of the desk for things like solder irons or anything like that temporary um but i want a general use plug socket so say yeah. for example um that that heater is plugged in i've got a socket in the corner and it's quite you gotta kind of climb down and reach around and i want to don't want to be doing that every time i need something so no, that's not and I've got a few other things that I'm going to put in. Um, so, yeah. And it's just all these little jobs. And um, I need to move this this shelf down a little bit because it's catching on these drawers. Oh, I'm going to be um, saying you need to move them. Yeah. So that will get moved down a little bit, maybe just a few inches. It means there'll be a bit of a step, but everything will fit better. Yeah. Um, I'm basically I have a, I have a desk that I can work with um but I just want to tidy it up also I want to get get it painted um now to get it painted I've got to take everything off the desk paint it leave it for the day to dry then I can put everything back on um so with that extra week's holiday coming in March and then another one in April i know that worst case scenario i think this room will be finished by the end of april um so that'll be handy sure. um and i've also got i'm sure i've got something happening in february march april april yeah i've got a, a scale model show um happening i think it's a scottish one um i think the one ah ah right the one my holiday in april i think i can't when it is but the scale model show in scotland the way it works is i'm in london while this show is on yeah then i've got another week in london then i'm home on holiday yeah and what i'm going to speak to uh, london about is instead of doing three weeks london one week holiday three weeks london i'm going to ask them if i can do six weeks in london and then have a week's holiday then return to kilmarnock um so i'll just rearrange when my holiday is true it's all you can do yeah um if i if they won't allow me to do that then i'll just say well that can i have the weekend off that time and then i'll just come home for a couple of days um the telford show which is coming in november as it stands it's actually the week that i'm on holiday okay um, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna travel down from scotland on the friday because i'm on holiday i won't have a lot of luggage um so i'll travel down on the friday i'll book a hotel for two nights in telford and if i book it now because we were looking at prices earlier on, didn't we? Um, 150 quid for two nights. God, yeah, we were looking yeah. at that. Um, I could pay extra and have bed and breakfast, but it works out 20 quid a day extra for bed and breakfast. So I'm like, yeah, I can buy a bacon sandwich for cheaper than that. Yeah, um, you can definitely. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll travel down on the Friday night at some point um stay in the hotel friday yeah uh did i say friday yeah go to the <laughs> telford show on the saturday um stay overnight at, at telford on the saturday night and then travel straight from telford to london um so obviously, obviously you'd have to have a word with work and say look instead of booking the ticket from scotland can you book it from telford yeah. they obviously won't cover my travel down to telford because that's on my own time um but it'll save them a few pennies and it it means that it'll be a lot actually it's not that much quicker um i did <laughs> work out yeah it's um it's four hours 
from London changing at Birmingham. Um, the train from Glasgow to London is five hours. Yeah, so, it's quite a long journey. Uh, and obviously I know people roughly in that area, don't I? Birmingham way, maybe yeah. maybe a quick shot up to Lancaster. <laughs> um, who knows? Who knows? So maybe leave Friday morning and um, stop by and uh, visit a few people. Why not? But, yeah, I am. But basically, I'm definitely, definitely doing Telford this year, but I'm doing the Saturday, not the Sunday. Yeah. So the next problem is what am I going to do with all the stuff I buy from Telford? Um, <laughs> God knows. I think the only way I can do it is buy an extra suitcase. Yeah. Take that empty. Uh, whatever I buy at Telford, I'll chuck in the suitcase. And then once I get to London, I'll have to have it sent home by every or something. So, um, I haven't missed any chat, have I? No. Because no one said anything in ages. Are we still streaming? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's happened before. Uh, I was doing a stream with Little History before, and there's me and Carl. Little History had disappeared for something. And uh, me and Carl were chatting away, thinking we were still going live. <laughs> and we said, um, no one said anything in chat. Yeah. And we noticed that Little History was in a completely different stream. And then we looked up and we went, hang on, we're not streaming. <laughs> it just turns out we were in like the post stream chat. Yeah, I suppose it does happen though, do not it, when well, you're having a good conversation? Does. It was quite funny though. I jump in with little history. He shouldn't put the link now. I'll just jump in yeah. now. So yeah, once, jump in once now. he gets to know you, I mean, I pretty much have the same rule that he does. Um, if I don't know you, um, I'm not going to risk my stream. Yeah. You no, know, I don't need some people might just, I mean, I've seen some funny things going on on streams where, but I like to know who you are first. Yeah. Um, definitely. Even that time when, um, um anfield came in but he didn't come in as anfield he came in as some other name and i'm like i don't know who you are <laughs> and then once he said who it was i'm like oh yeah yeah no problems um so yeah anyone's welcome to join in um but obviously i want you to sort of take part in the chat first just get let's get to know you i'm not saying you have to do it for six months or so but once i know the name you know, every now and again we get new names pop up, and that's really nice. It's um, nice seeing new names in there. Yeah, in yeah. It's a bit of a, if it's a bit of a strange one because I like I like new people coming in, getting to know the new people. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, all the people we know and love, um, they're just as valuable. Yes. Um, so we love everybody. Um, but yeah. Um, right, so I'm for, I'm running out of interesting things to say now. When your next live? Uh, when am I next live? That is a good question. Right, so let me check my rotor. I think it might not be for a while, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um, right, and I my duties keep changing. Um. Right, so I am looking at, they keep giving me, well, see, the funny thing about barking, don't get me wrong, I love barking. Yeah. Um, but they do change my duties. They give me, I mean, this time I've got quite late shifts. Yeah. Say quite late, I'm finishing about nine o'clock. Um, so my next day off is Saturday the 13th. Yeah. And I finish at quarter to 11 on the Friday. So I can do the 13th. And then my next day off after that is the 17th, which is the same week. Yeah. But there won't be a stream. I won't be able to live stream next week. No. So are you up for two streams in a week? Yeah. Um, now, the week after, I have got, as it stands at the moment, 
I'm working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday off. Yeah. Now the Sunday um, I will be coming home by the sun. That Sunday's my day to come back. Yeah. Now if they're not, I'm not going to ask for overtime because if they give me three days, they have to make that up to 50. Yeah. The so work 30 hours, get paid 50. If I then ask for a day's overtime, I'll be working 40, but still only get paid 50. Right. So I've got to do three days overtime to see any extra money. If they force me to work, which I don't think they will. Oh, hang on. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, right. So they've given me 15 shifts. Um, so if they don't work me Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, it's no point me hanging around for three days to come home no. doing a stream. I might as well come home the Wednesday night. Um, so I would suggest that perhaps we could stream on the 26th of January. Yeah, which is a Friday night, um, subject to change. Yeah, <clears throat> because obviously, if I'm working Thursday, I'll probably come home Friday. If I'm working True. Friday, I'll be coming home a Saturday. Um, so do you like that? Yeah, that's fine with me. Right. So as I forget things, write that down. In fact, right, I'm going to do. Can you do me a favour? Yeah, Can you get your phone out and send me a message on Facebook. This is this is me getting you to write down my notes for me. <laughs> you write down one message that says 13th of January, and then do another message that says 17th of January. 17th, yeah, 13th, 17th. And then the third yeah. message that says 26th of January, uh, S STC, which means subject to change. So you guys all happy with that? Um, I am. So I've got my channel update on the 28th of January. Um, actually, I could write that in. Right. So what we're saying, 13th. Did we say 13th? Yeah, 13th, 17th, 26th. Right. Uh, right. Live Natasha. And then what did we say, 17th? Yes. Live Natasha, and then we're saying 26. 26. Live question mark. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's come out in big font for some reason. Uh, right, so I've got my live my channel update on the 28th. That's going to be hard, isn't it? Yeah, I, when I do my live updates, I like to do all my unboxings. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm potentially gonna arrive home on the Thursday. Uh I won't arrive home on the Thursday, Thursday night. Um, I might even stay in on the Thursday actually and get the Thursday night. Yeah, I'll probably get because I'm finishing at half past nine on the Wednesday. Yeah. So that's a little bit late to get the uh, overnight coach. So I might get the overnight coach on the Thursday and arrive home Friday morning. Um, so I'm going to arrive home Friday morning and I can't open my packages until Sunday. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then I'm on holiday for a week. So do you want to set a couple of days for when I'm on holiday? Yeah, might as well. <coughs> if anything comes up, as you know, I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, so what a couple of good days for you. I'm thinking maybe Monday, Thursday. Yeah. Mm. Never really asked Natasha a question when she's drinking coffee. I went, yeah. Okay, right. So it's because it's nice and warm in here. Stayed warmer longer. 
and I meant paste, 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 paste. Can't be. No, I'm just updating my spreadsheet. So Monday and Thursday. Yeah. Right. Oh, nearly my spreadsheet up then. Right. So we've got the 17th. No, we haven't. We've got the 6th, 13th. Yeah. The 17th. So the 13th is a Saturday. Yeah. We've got Wednesday the 17th. Yeah. We've got Friday the 26th, question mark. Yeah. Um, then we've got Monday the 29th and Thursday the 1st. Yeah. Which is the day my lodge is moving out. I know, yeah. Is it that strange he's moving out? Well, it's it's bittersweet, to be honest with you. I've got a couple of issues with him. Um, but he's still a good guy in the, in the end of the day. But um, he says he wants to move out with his girlfriend. Um, he moved out before. And it's funny, I said I'm not going to have another lodger. And yeah. um, he, he, he sort of spoke to me a few months later and said he's having a few issues. Most of them tidy issues. Yeah. Um, like his washing. He don't do his washing up very well. Well, when he does wash up, he doesn't do a great job. Yeah. And sharing a house with four or five other people, obviously washing up is a major issue, isn't it? Hair, yeah. he gets away yeah. with hair. Um, so um, he's moved back, and he just he's a little bit worse than he was before in that department. Right, okay. But I say, but he, he wanted to move back, and I said, "Yeah, you were a good lodger. I don't need a lodger, but you were, you know, I know what I'm getting with. I thought I knew what I was getting with him." Yeah, and, uh, he's been here since September, and uh, he's met this girl. Apparently, apparently, this girl's brother runs a car wash in London. Right. So get, it's his flat, but he's letting his his sister live there. Right. Um, so it's it's minimal rent. Um. So he's moving in, and in six months' time, they're going to be uh, moving down to London to work on this car wash okay. or, or whatever. Um, so, but I have said to him, I said, look, you won't be coming back. Um, that's it. I'm, I'm done with logics. Um, yeah. Because obviously, when he moved out before, I got a cat. And the cat's always been allowed in the bedroom. Yeah. Now, since he's been back, the cat's been shut out of the bedroom. Yeah. And um, it's a bit inconvenient because um, I can't put the cat litter in there. Yeah. So they've had two cat litter trays between two cats. I do like to have the third cat litter tray. Yeah, there's no harm in that. Well, it's the way it should be. You, you want one litter tray per cat plus one litter tray. Yeah. So they've got one each at the moment. Don't get me wrong, they manage with it. Um, but obviously once once he goes, I'll be putting a litter tray in the in the bedroom. Um and it'll be an extra place for him to, to go. Definitely I agree with that one. Yeah. So um at the moment they sleep in the in the living room and they'll have a choice of living room or bedroom. They'll give them a little bit more space to run around. Um and it's a bit more space for me to space out, to spread out. Yeah, definitely. Because I don't put a lot of stuff in my bedroom. Um, I'm, no, I'm one of these. Um, I don't have a TV in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, because if I want to watch TV, that's what the living room is for. Yeah, I get you. Uh, um, don't get me wrong. I take my phone to bed with me and I'll watch YouTube. That's what I do as well. Watching be on the phone um but all i have in my bedroom is my wardrobe chest of drawers and a bed yeah and I, I don't think i need much more no so um yeah i'll enjoy having the bedroom back nice but also yeah. the bed i mean i've got the sofa bed at the moment there's not a lot of space for me and two cats um mm. Shadow always used to sleep on the bedroom. He used to sleep on one side of the bed, and I slept on the other. Um, it's 
he's a, he's a weird cat. All these things that people moan about their animals. I know. He I know. doesn't bother me when he sleeps. He doesn't wake me up. He wants he's he wants fuss as soon as I wake up. But he sits there watching me, waiting for me to wake up. That's weird. I know. I but know. it's nice at the same time. Mm. But the other cat, the spirit, does it as well now. As soon, as soon, yeah, as soon as I move, the first thing when when spirit wants a bit of a fuss or he, and he's happy, he kind of chirps rather than a purr. All right. So the first thing I hear when I wake up is this chirp. Um, I, I want, I'd love to be able to record it because it's. I I thought I read somewhere that cats chirp when they're watching the birds yeah probably there's a there's a there's a theory that it's they're chirping to try and make a bird noise so that the birds aren't startled yeah but he kind of chirps when he's happy oh if he comes through like sometimes i might be sitting there he'll come through and he'll chirp at me and that's when i know he's going to jump up on on the um on the table yeah no he wants it's it's his i want fuss um hello vicky's crafting how are you um why does it have to be craft vicky's crafting home no nice. uh, a name like that you sound like someone i want to get to know because um obviously i do crafting as well as other stuff um but i've just picked up the cricket machine just before christmas um come in and out that's fair enough um yeah i've just picked up the cricket machine and, yeah. um i've not really had a serious play with it um i've made two vinyl stickers right uh, one was the cricket thing that you can get if you, you you get this software with it and they have like loads of sample designs and um i printed off one of those and stuck it on the cricket machine okay and, um ah the trill that's it my cat does the trill yeah it's it's a funny noise but it's a nice one isn't it because he does it when he's happy and he what he's he, he's come come in for a bit of fuss at least he's happy oh that's the main thing on you know happy. what even when he's not happy he's happy yeah you know when he's you can see him when he's bored he just sits there sometimes he'll just sit in the hallway waiting for something to happen he's a very patient cat um, but I mean, like I've always said about him when he wants fuss, he's, um, he's very demanding with the fuss, but he wants 10 minutes. You, you have to just take 10 minutes out of your day, give him the fuss. And then what he'll do is he'll settle down somewhere. He wants to be near you, but not on you. Yeah. Um, and it's like when I get my desk sorted out, I'll have a little cushion on the desk. And I know he'll jump up on the desk. He'll demand 10, 15 minutes attention. Then he'll sit on the cushion and he won't bother me. As long as I don't go off anywhere, he'll just be happy sitting there. True. Uh, Shadow, uh, sorry, Spirit, she's she's a little bit different, but she's still seven months. She just wants to explore everything and investigate. And if anything moves, like right now, I mean, she's not in here at the moment, but like if I move... The wire on the on the headphones will move, so yeah. she'll be on it. Um, but she's a kitten. Uh, so Vicky says same thing. She's on the bed in the morning. What? Yes, isn't it wonderful? They don't hassle you. I can yeah. wake up at two in the morning. I can wake up at ten in the morning. He's just happy to sit and wait. And I'll wait till one of my birds tweet. Yeah. Go, okay, time to get up then. Yeah. And it's usually Mickey. Yeah. Um, but it's, as soon as I stir, they both jump up on the bed and, and we have what I call good morning session. Yeah, why I just, not? I just sit there and I'm like, good morning, good morning. Uh, and I just give them a bit of fuss. Um, I do give Shadow a bit of fuss, then Spirit, then Shadow. And I always start and end on Shadow. So it looks like I'm giving him the same amount, but Shadow yeah. gets a little bit more because he's number one. He's yeah. he's the alpha cat. Um, I'm not sure if I'm the alpha of the household or he is. 
um sometimes that boundary is a little bit blurred <laughs> um yeah they don't half love don't half love to run zoomies in the night yeah doesn't that drive you mad sometimes um their routine used to be a sit they'd be quiet and lovely uh even now shadow if i'm up too late <coughs> he'll start hassling me to go to bed yeah and then as soon as i go to bed it's Zoomies time. They're running around the house. <laughs> and I'm like, you want me to go to bed, but now you're up. Unless they're like, we want you out of the way so that we can have playtime. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. It won't be long before they start coming to you soon. Um, yeah, it gets worse when we have that. Is that high winds? Oh, winds. Why is that then? Wow, I never, never, never realised that. Seems to send them scatty. Maybe that's significant. See, I thought because they've been more kitten-like uh, yeah. since I've been home. Because obviously, when I'm in London, they have a couple of people come round. And it, obviously, V. Well, V's a funny one. He doesn't really give them any attention, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, he still comes and goes. And then I have a cat sitter come in, and she comes in, she feeds them, does a litter trays make sure the water's topped up and then she'll sit and play with them for half an hour and uh, the rest of the day they just um just do what they want to do they spend most of the day sleeping and then they have a bit of play time and it's great because i've got a couple of webcams so i can just sit there looking at them at any time and yeah. they're absolutely meant i'm surprised my house is still standing the way they've been running around <laughs> but they're not it's like they always say as soon as you get a pet there we will rule you yeah. not the other way around yeah and obviously since i've been home and i've spent a lot of time at home because i'm i'm on holiday yeah they really really enjoyed having people around and you know shadow spirit will come up to me three or four times a day and do what a bit of a bit of fuss um and it's been lovely and i'm going to miss him in the next three weeks because we've just grown even closer you know we've got this routine and that and i always i always miss that routine and by the third week of, of london i'm always um pining to come home yeah it's a long long time to work isn't it really yeah well what i found last time i was in london the the last week of london having a webcam and watching the cats probably made it worse because i can see them yeah and it kind of gets you addicted to looking at it in a way. Well, it's just that I'm, I'm, I, I want to kind of reach out and the, some, I want to put the, um, the voice thing on. Yeah. And I want to say hello to them, but that just, um, I don't do anything. They don't seem to understand when I'm, I'm calling them no. uh, through the camera. They'll soon work it out. But no, it's, it's fine. But yeah, I just, I, I like to sit and watch them. And obviously the first week I'm like, oh, are they okay? And then I'm seeing them that they're okay and getting on with things. Um, so that makes me happy. Second week, I'm neither here nor there. But that third week, I do want to come home. And that's like saying, yeah. um, watching them on the camera is probably making it worse. And I'm well, at least you know watching. they're okay. That's, that's the main thing. Oh, you know. you know what? These cats are as happy as anything. Um they say people say to me i spoil them um i prefer I, I honestly don't think i spoil them because i'm out of the house so much yeah. i tried to give them lots of stimulation yeah um i mean i posted a picture on facebook the other day of um i've got two cat trees one for yes. Shep, one for well originally one for nymeria but now it's for spirit yeah but they've been spending the daytime he sits on the on the highest one and she sits in one of the boxes in the cat tree. Oh, right, yeah. I think I've seen and, that. Yeah. Um, and they were just fast asleep and they're enjoying life. And one of my friends replied back saying, uh, that's not a cat tree, that's a fortress. You spoil <laughs> them. And I'm like, well, you know, because I'm out of the house a lot. Um, but, I mean, they have new – I bought them a couple of new toys the other day. Yeah, like this cat it was having a funny. I love giving them catnip. Um, it is funny, it's like they go on a high. Oh, he gets quite aggressive, 
Does he? Oh, yeah, he got this toy. And you know when he loves a toy because he'll pick it up and he'll go and take it somewhere and go and play yeah. it. Well, then Spirit sees it. She wants it. Well, then he gets a bit aggressive. It's like, get off my toy. Then I give her her own toy. So she's happy. Yeah. But now she looks like she's having more fun than Shadow. So now Shadow wants her toy. Oh, oh right. Yeah. She can have both of them. Yeah. So poor old Spirit, she gets left out. So she gets the toy the next day when he's got a bit bored of it. Yeah. Um, so it's it's quite funny. But it doesn't matter how many toys you buy them, when they're new, it's Shadow's turn to play first. Yeah. Maybe that's what being alpha male is about. I get it well be. Yeah. I get to play with the toy first. You get it when I'm finished with it. Yeah. Um but yeah, maybe I should buy him a hundred. He can't play with a hundred at once, can he? Well, you never know. You never know on that one, would you? What Mickey says. But if you were to give each of them the same toy at the same time, yeah, they would still argue with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like kids, isn't it? If you give two kids identical toys or sweets, one would think the other one is enjoying it more, so that they're missing out. Yeah. Oh, it's always the way. There you uh, go. There's one saying. No, she, Vicky says, same as a food bowl, one per cat, and they still. Now, I've got that one sussed. Um, I have got a little bit of psychology going on. Shadow is overweight. Uh, he's about half a kilo overweight. I don't think he's lost much weight. Um, now, he's on adult indoor prone to obesity food spirit is still a kitten so she ideally wants to still be on kitten food yeah uh, i've spoken to the vet about this and, she, and the vet's in agreement um now we don't for some reason he absolutely loves whiskers kitten food um he eats whiskers kitten food like it's dreamies so we've managed to we've got rid of the dreamy they don't have dreamies in the house uh, so they have whiskers kitten food and that's their treat food um now shadow won't eat cat food anything in fact even now he's going off fish um, really yeah he won't eat fish now um now i've got some friends who've got cats that won't eat fish and they used to love it now whether it's that they're growing up and their 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 food has changed <coughs> excuse me sorry um or that they've just had i used to give him tuna every day instead of cat as as though it's cat food yeah um so my friend's theory is that they've had tuna all the time and they've got used to it yeah could be uh, so now the vet has said you've got to cut back on that tuna that's half the reason he's overweight um they're allowed tuna a couple of times a week so they get it at weekends now um now, because I know he doesn't eat cat food, and he also doesn't like licky licks, um, so what I do is every morning, the breakfast routine is three bowls go down. There's one bowl that's got a bit of licky lick in it. That goes to, to spirit. Yeah. And one bowl that has whiskers kitten food, just a very small scoop full. Um, and then there's a middle bowl that's got cat food in it which is then offered to Shadow, and then he turns his nose up at it and walks away, and what he doesn't eat, Spirit will eat. Wow. So Spirit, Spirit still gets the kitten food. Yeah. Shadow has the opportunity, which he turns down. And then, obviously, the, the main food bowl that's down all the time is, uh, is the main senior cat food one. Yeah. And normally I give them a scoop a day, um, but they sometimes the bowl is empty. So what we do is we give them a scoop and a half, which includes any food left over from the previous day. Yeah. So what we do is we put the old food into the scoop, then top that scoop up. We put half a scoop in the in the bowl, then the food goes in. So the old food is always sitting on the top. Yeah. Um, every now and again they eat it all. Sometimes they hardly touch it. Um so yeah um but we shadow i mean you can't deny see if i had one cat 
I could give them an exact amount of food and you'll just have to be hungry at certain times of the day. Yeah. Because I've got another cat. Um, obviously, things will be different again once we, once Spirit's a, a cat. Um, but she's still, and she's not overweight. Wow. Um, she's, if anything, she's underweight. I think she's got a little bit of bone. Um, so, and they don't eat. I give them one pouch of cat food and there's usually a few little morsels left over in the morning. Um, so I think the fish will go tomorrow. Um, I've got some different fish for tomorrow. I've got, I'd never heard of this until I went to Morrison's. Okay. Sild, S-I-L-D. Um, and I've also got Skip, Skipper, is it called? Now, one of those, I've got a feeling Shadow doesn't like it. I think one is like crab. No, I got him crab. He won't touch crab. Never had <laughs> like crab. Never. Wow. Mm. And uh, I've also got him the old favourite. Um, you won't believe this. Pilchards in tomato sauce. The old red can. Yeah. No, I absolutely it. love it. Absolutely uh. love it. So... Um, yeah, half a can on a Saturday and the other half a can on a Sunday. That's good uh, going, though. But we'll see how he takes to it. What he can do, isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, let's say he's... Um, uh, I moved over to a higher meat cat food of Zoo Plus. I love Zoo Plus. I love Zoo Plus. Um, yeah. Just very... Well, it's very convenient for me. Yeah. Um, what I've started doing now is when I'm on my normal holiday, because I get holiday regularly every 10 weeks. Yeah. So as soon as I'm on holiday, I buy enough cat food, litter, dry food to last 10 weeks. It then gets delivered while I'm home. And yeah. then it all goes into, hello, Shadow, mate. Are you going to come and join us? Hello. No, no, he's walked off. See, so he's mm -hmm. heard the lodger. And then he's gone to see the lodger, but he won't. He won't give him anything. Won't give him any fuss or anything. So we just. You're later on. Hello, you spotted me now. Am I? Am I a good second place? Am I? <laughs> yeah, he's. I think he's doing the bedtime hassle now. Yeah, exactly. It's about the time he does it. Uh. So partly is a higher liquid content as well. See, that's what worries me. Um, he eats, basically his diet is 100% dry food. Um, now, I've checked with the vet. There's nothing wrong with dry food, but obviously it has its own particular health issue. You're going to come and say hello then. Come on, matey. I don't think anyone's seen you yet. Come on. He's, yeah, he's, he's doing the bedtime hassle thing. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. that time he normally does it now. Yeah. Come and say hello to everyone. Hello, me, Shadow. Let me move the camera. Not, don't run away. Don't run away. Hello, Shadow. Well, this is the big fat boy. As you can see, he's huge. Far too fat. But there you go. He's got this big belly. See this belly? Yeah. So He's a good boy, aren't he? No, they're mine. That's my macarons. Oh, <laughs> V's trying to eat my macarons. You can have one, V. You can have one. Um. So, ah, is that why you've got higher liquid food? Because he has no problems eat drinking water. He'll he'll drink all the water there is. Um. So that's what I've been told is make sure they're drinking plenty of water. Um, she's not a problem, not a problem because cat food's got water in it and um, licky licks are quite uh, liquidy as well. Yeah. He's a good boy. He's a lovely boy, aren't you? Hello, Shadow. Never mind about it. But I mean, look, look, it's fur. He's got a lovely glossy coat. He's got a glossy side to him. Yeah. He's just got all his loose hair. Oh, is he molting? He's always molting. <laughs> always. You're a good boy, aren't you? He's my good boy. But, um, yeah. Oh, he was really poorly a couple of months back. Found him collapsed one morning after search. Oh, bless. Bless. 
You're going to settle down. You're going to settle down. Uh, it's certainly his bedtime. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite funny first thing in the morning because as soon as I wake up, obviously he wants breakfast. I want the toilet. And I'm sorry, I'm going to the toilet before he gets breakfast. Yeah. But there he is. He, he kind of bites my knee when I'm on the toilet. Not oh, a yeah. nasty bite. It's that yeah. nice friendly bite. And um, it's quite funny. Oh, I thought I was going to get a purr out of you then. But sadly not. You never purr, do you? Why do you never purr? Spirit is loud. Spirit? I've just got to touch her there. And that's yeah. that purr button just there. But him? No. That's my paint water. You shouldn't really drink that. That's my good boy. He's a heavy lump, though. I bet he is. There you go. Yeah, I've got one that nips too, and it don't doesn't hurt, but he does nip. Um, but I don't see. Maybe I don't know if I should do anything about it. I know he means it affectionately. Yes. You've got that lump in your tail. I think he's put his like tail in some cat food or something. And now it's gone hard. It's a good boy, aren't you? Beautiful boy. He's got this beautiful eggshell, egg, egg timer shape on the front of his face. Oh. I do like that. And beautiful white feet. Mostly black with just little white bits just in the right places. I'll see if I can find you. Uh, we'll play spot the difference. Um. Mm -hmm. Because he don't look nothing like when he was a kitten. No, he doesn't. No. He was tiny then. He was just, his, everything was different about him. Yeah. So, not that one. Try to find a... There you go, look. That's, that's him, one of the first pictures I took of him. Yeah, tiny. He looks quite scared there, doesn't he? Yeah, that's when he first moved in, wasn't it? Most of these are videos. Oh, there he is in his cat tree. Oh, uh, I used to put him in there because he, he he was too little to climb up. Yeah, he could climb down, but he couldn't get up. Look, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cute. Yeah, he don't look anything like. Well, I mean, no. you recognise him. And this one. My friend taught me how to take pictures of cats. That's one. Uh, it's what you have to do is point the camera to them, but have a pen or something there and yeah. wiggle it. And then they focus on the pen. Um, see, this is what I get all morning. He's happy. That's amazing. Yeah, he's just, I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's in a marking his scent mood. Mm. Uh, oh the dribble yeah he's so fussy when he does it and dribbles yeah tash you look tired i am i'm uh, getting there yeah well look here we go look see look he's had his little bit of fuss now he'll just lay down that's all he wants like you saw like he just what 10 minutes of fuss and now he'll just settle down. And this is this is what he'll be like until I move. Yeah, he's like, no, nope, bedtime now. You, you 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 know, you can deal with that, can't you? He doesn't get in the way. Um, there is a video coming out where it was quite funny because um I'd where I've been on holiday, I've been having I've been working quite hard in the mornings, yeah. getting tired, going for an afternoon nap, then okay. getting up. Um, so I, and it ended up getting to a stage where I'm only sleeping for a couple of hours during the night, right. I'm mostly during the day. And um, I'd woken up about half past two in the morning and I just thought I felt wide awake. So I thought I'll get up and I'll do a little bit of filming. Yeah. Well, of course, as soon as I wake up, these guys think it's breakfast time. And I'm like, I ain't feeding you breakfast at two in the morning, two, three in the morning. Yeah. Absolutely no chance. Mm. So I tried to get on with some film and they were both hassling me constantly. 
um, and it got to about half past three, four o'clock in the morning. It's like they both went on strike. They just both of them plonked themselves down on the desk and wouldn't move until I gave them breakfast. I got it on film. <laughs> um, that I might just show you. I think I showed you last time. I think you did. And it was it was quite yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it was quite funny. I I just thought that. Uh, but I had to give in in the end, so I had to I had to give him a pretend breakfast. I didn't want to give. I remember him you saying about that last yeah, time. I didn't want to give him a full breakfast. Um, that's so not it. This one. So this yeah, is the we go. So I'll I'll just show you that, and then we'll look at closing the stream. Um, video. I want that R two D two. You can't have him. 109 so this is coming out in about three weeks All right so yeah so ignore the the black screen is done on purpose i'm ready i'm sort of explain things and then i reveal so this is what i had to deal with the other morning so this is supposed to be a video for issues 109 110 and 111 but i've come across two problems first of all my front camera has stopped working uh, that in itself isn't a major problem it just means you won't be able to see me front on uh, the second problem i've got is my cats have decided to do a sit-in protest uh, i am filming this straight after i filmed the last week's episode it is now half past three in the morning it's far too early for their breakfast um, but they're not having it. I'm up. They want breakfast. So they're going to make sure I can't film on YouTube as you can see um, Now I've told shadow off and he's in a hump um, And I know when he's in a hump because he doesn't look at you um, It's like he knows where all the cameras are and as you can quite clearly see he's got his back to the to the body camera um, so I'm going to have to take a break. I think I might even have to uh, have to give in to their demands and give them an early breakfast. <laughs> I just love that. It's it's the spirit having a dream as well. You can see yeah. that no one. <coughs> but yeah, doing it as well. It's quite funny and cute yeah. at the same time. But they weren't they weren't having it they they're like yeah okay right we're gonna make sure you can't film and then shadow yeah. making sure i don't see him yeah um not talking to you yeah he do that when he's in a hump he sits at the doorway yeah laying down looking out doesn't look at you yeah. So it's strange you... what they do, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, I mean, I might just be sort of making things up, but he's he just that's the way it looks. So, um, but yeah, let's see, he's he's fine there, he's just sitting there. You can see he's happy enough, true. He um, can, he looks happy, that's the main thing. Yeah, you want a row when he doesn't, yeah, yeah. But look, he's he's got his little bit of fuss that he wanted, and now he's just he's letting me get. Well, I say he's letting me get on with things. I'm not going to get on with much with him on the desk. No. Um, have I got now? I'll switch the overhead camera off. Right. So you're a bit tired. I'm a bit tired. I got a lot to do tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we have done a bit of a well, it's quite a short stream for us, isn't it? Four hours. Yeah, we had, we had, we've only done an hour. That's a new and like well, us. That's that's a mic hour, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So, oh, sorry. Did I touch your tail? You don't like that so much, do you? Um. Right. So yeah. So I'm gonna. Who wants to close the show? Me or you? Well, I I started it. You can finish it. Do you know what? It's an argument I cannot argue with. There. Um. Right. Okay. Then say goodbye. Then and then I will close the show as well. You're saying. No, you can't go up there because there's lots of things to knock off. <laughs> Thank so, you, everyone, no. for joining. Hope to see you on the next one. In the meantime, happy crafting or happy hobby and stay safe. So thank you for joining me today, Natasha. It's always a big pleasure. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Um, so um, you have done really well today. Um, 
obviously you don't know how well you've done but trust me you have done well yeah. um anyone who's still watching right now has done well as well um yeah so yeah thank you again guys for watching it's you guys that make this possible um our next live stream isn't going to be until the 13th of jan which is actually next week isn't it it's just yeah. the end of next week i'm sorry that i can't pin down the same days every week but that's you know bus driving is one of those jobs where you you get funny shifts um, i'm sure they won't mind well i think that people like but it's funny actually if i don't do a stream for a lot long time i get i get a couple of people messaging me come when's your next live stream why why have you not been streaming you know who you are don't you mike <laughs> um so right yes yeah, so on the next time we're going to be on is the 13th of january which is a saturday um so stay safe stay hobbying till then um so manu saying in a world when you can be anything be nicer than you will be a better person than you were yesterday take care guys bye bye bye